You're now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Check. Mike check, waifu, waifu, king, tell you I know. Is that you? What's up, Brolo Dolo? This is episode 246 of Mike Check, Waifu, Waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mike Check, Waifu, Waifu is where you get early access to the video version of this podcast. It's where you get access to our conversational podcast, The After Story. You get access to Take Talks and, and Mike Check Mangas and live trailer reacts, etc. Welcome to the live show. We appreciate y'all for joining us. We couldn't do this without the Patreon producers. You guys literally keep the lights on, keep the podcast running as well. Thank you so much to the Patreon producers. Christian, the archivist, Rob from Dad Needs to Talk Podcast, Fear, Gold D, Dre, Kent the Pro from Chaotic Culture, explicitly all for one Matt, Monique Williams, Nachi, Simi Sensei, Frozen, Rob Stone, T Money Fingers. Thank y'all so much for producing this and many other episodes of the podcast. We appreciate you. We couldn't do it without you. You mean the world to us for supporting us and everybody that supports us on Patreon, not just the producers, all of y'all that support us. We love you so very much. It means the world to us. Thank you so much for supporting us. This is 246, um, our live episode. Remember, every end of the month, usually the last Sunday of the month, we do a live episode here on YouTube and on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, we're here. <laughs> I, forgot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Welcome to my check wife, wife, food, the anime podcast that's brought to you every Tuesday at 9 30 a.m. CT. Um, most consistent podcast you probably know. We appreciate y'all for stopping by. Listen, today is a big episode because it is the anime, the spring anime preview for 2024. I am looking forward to picking the sleepers, reading off y'all sleepers and hearing y'all sleepers too. I'm looking forward to it. But before we get into that, I got to ask my brother, King Telly, I know how you feeling. Bro, we live. Um, I'm good, man. I'm good. It's It's been, uh, so it's my first week of school. But congratulations. Thank you, brother. It's an accelerated course. It's eight weeks. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going at a breakneck pace. But remember, if you eight, get a beat, you're getting in trouble like you used to back in the day. Bro, if I, I get in trouble for 97%. Why you get one wrong? Uh, but we're not there no more. I ain't got nobody looking over my shoulder other than my kids. Um, but shout, uh, out to, shout out to Auntie Shinshu. I love her. I swear, bro. I swear. If she, that's why I don't even talk to her about school because I ain't even trying to hear all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yo, get off my back! But no, it's a good week, bro. It's a it's a mad good week. Uh, I'm 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 good. I'm excited, man. You excited for this you, week? Bro? I'm excited yeah, too, I'm, man. We had some great finales this week, man. We definitely did. We definitely did. So what we going? What we decided to do? And maybe maybe this is is a lot shorter. Yeah, gonna tell us how he doing? <laughs> oh shit, my fault. Hi, I'm doing well. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Like TK does nothing. Saphir from one of the Patreon producers. Anima, who's our mod and also another podcaster in our podcast circle. We love him to death. Shout out to him and his new show, though. The wrestling one they do is fucking live, yeah. by the way. It's incredible. That's a dope show. I don't even watch wrestling. I haven't watched wrestling since the Attitude Era, but that shit is intriguing. So I just wanted to <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Uh, shout out to Sammy Sensei in the chat. Crystal in the chat, as always. We love y'all for being here. But, oh, and shout out to the, the viewers we have on on. Uh, Twitter this time we actually got Twitter working right perfectly you can actually that's chat so. too so that's good but I'm doing well man I've been playing so much Dragon's Dogma 2 that it, <laughs> it's unbelievable unbelievable how much Dragon's Dogma 2 I've been playing um, I just set everything else aside yeah man it's because I was in the middle of rebirth all right I got to like chapter 9 and it's out of 14 chapters so I'm like I'm, I'm beating games and then Dragon's Dogma come out and I play that and I'm like I'm, I just fall in love I just fall in love so I, I, that's been my time commitment but it's also something I want to talk about that I did watch that is completely new. 
Ooh. that I absolutely think deserves some some polo time. And I'm gonna give it here, here give it here shortly. But before we do that, tell what was your episode of the week this week? Uh we can say uh I mean there's some heat. So we can also let me let me look at what I what I had that I actually finished. <laughs> it um, definitely was some heat. Because it was from Valley City. Yeah, it was. Um it, it was a lot of really good ones. Um I even like Banishment Heroes Party ending. Oh my god. Uh, I thought they did some great things. Seventh time loop had a great uh a great little capstone. Apothecary Diaries gave me some uh some thug tears. Mm. <laughs> a sign of affection uh had me torn and and in love mm-hmm. uh this season has some heat um but I can't even lie to you and it, I know it's bias I don't care I don't care Freeran had the uh the finale I wanted it had everything I wanted man it was so fucking perfect it was absolutely perfect oh my gosh oh listen that's that's gonna come next week, Semi Sensei. Sorry, he says I got to catch up on the after story to hear about your rebirth playthrough. That's gonna come next week for sure. Um, but my episode of the week this week is very very tough because, like you said, there's a, a bunch of great stuff. But if I'm gonna have to, and 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 please stick with me, I'm going to give my episode of the week by going right into a show that I picked up. It's all mm-hmm. Crystal. It's all Crystal's fault. It's always going to be Crystal's fault. We blaming Crystal today. But I was, I was scouring. I was, I was lurking through her watch list as I do since we're friends on Analyst. Analyst.co slash uh, Polo Born no, slash user slash Polo Born Fly. So make sure you follow me there. Check the link in the description of this YouTube video. But as I do, as I as I scroll through and see what she's watching, she got a lot of shit that I will not touch. I will not touch the boy love stuff. I'm gonna leave that to her. That's all you. But, <laughs> but something up this. I looked at the, uh, a show that she was watching. I clicked on my, should I watch this? I commented on it and she said, absolutely. I picked it up and this show deserved my episode of the week only because it isn't going to get any love. Even though I still think everything that you mentioned is, was God tier perfect, uh, perfect endings. But it's Dr. Elise, the Royal Lady with the Lamp. This, Dr. Elise? Dr. Elise, the Royal, mm. the Royal Lady with the Lamp. Let me tell you, when I tell y'all this fucking show was downright it, it's seven time loop levels of incredible. It's that fucking good. It's about it's about this girl named Elise who lived who lived a life in a time where there was it's kind of a steampunk time, right? So you got guns, you got ships, you got shit like that. She she uh she was a complete asshole, a brat, a terrible terrible uh what then becomes an empress. She becomes an empress, and she just basically ruins the entire kingdom and gets put to death. She's killed. This don't, this don't seem like a polo ass anime. Hear me out. She then gets reincarnated into modern day time, right? And to make up for the terrible life that she lived as Elise, she's now at, she, her name is now Ayo. Uh, Ayo? Yeah, her name is Ayo. And she's a doctor. She said, I'm going to save as many lives as I can. I'm going to have a way better life than I had as Elise. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to just save as many doctors, as many p- people as I can. She becomes one of the best surgeons in Japan in the world where she travels across the worlds and stuff like that to save people. And she's just a fucking beast when it comes to, to surg- like surgical maneuvers and shit like that. She gets on a plane to go to Germany, okay? This is all in the first episode. She gets on a plane to go to Germany and the plane goes down. It crashes. She dies again. <laughs> she wakes up as, Do- as Elise again. But in, in like a, in like a past version of it. So before she becomes okay. the empress and becomes this brat, terrible girl and blah, blah, blah. So she relives the life as Elise, but she's uh, such a, such, such a better person. Like her whole personality changed because I, she's like, I'm not about to live the life I lived last time I was here because I fucked it up and I died and it was deserving. I still got my knowledge as a doctor though. So she becomes a doctor in this fucking, and back as in, in the times of the steampunk times and stuff. And she becomes an a, a incredible doctor. I'm not going to go into any more because that was all first episode stuff. But when I tell you this show is absolutely incredible. It's my episode of the week. It's It was wonderful. I watched it all in one day. Like from 1 to 11, all in one day. The season finale is next week. It is fucking good, man. It is so good. Like, it's like, this is how I look at it. Uh, here I go. Seven, yeah, time, seven time loop. And then Dr. Elise. It's like this. That's how much I like this shit. Like, it's so close to each other. And I cannot believe that I didn't watch the show in the beginning. Like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable good. 
Like it's so good. <laughs> we really need to get a sponsor by any list. Any must says about how much we tell others to get it. I know, right? Any list is just perfect. It's truly, truly perfect. Like, and for those of you who are already committed to any, uh, what is it? Anime list? Yeah, it's just anime list. You can import your list from anime list to any list. But yeah, the Dr. Elise agenda is real, Crystal. It's fucking incredible. It's it's an incredible show. Like I'm, I am blown back by how good it is. And I just completely missed it. I added it to my watch. And so I, I will, I will have it finished and finale watched for next week. We already get the, the week is already stacked next week as yeah, it is. Yeah, because we got a re, we got a review to do. For those of you that don't remember, we are reviewing uh, Love Don't Cost a Thing season two, aka bottom two character Tomazaki, season two. We're reviewing that as well as giving our final thoughts on like the season finales of all the shows that's, that's about to be done this season. So look forward to that. But I I had to give it that that love because it's just that good. Okay, it's just that good. Um. Now tell, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, but I guess I can't really say I'm that surprised. It's really that good, <laughs> and I think you will love it just as much because it's so. It's like, it, <laughs> just when I thought it was time to watch Saki, Sasaki and Peep Sphere says, "Listen, it's it's worth it, Sphere. I promise you, it's well worth it." But he always bringing something to add, bro. Bro, it's Crystal's fault. It's all Crystal's fault. It's always gonna be Crystal's fault. Now that I'm in the shoujo world. But it's <laughs> always influencing our host. <laughs> but um, you know what it reminded me of? And this goes back to, to my, my attitude era days when I used to watch wrestling. Shout out to Anima and, and their new wrestling show. Uh, I, I used to watch a show after wrestling called Burn Notice. Everybody knows that's my favorite TV oh, show yeah. of all time. But after Burn Notice was always a show called Royal Pains. And Royal Pains is like, um, it's about a doctor who, who was basically um fired from his, his New York City job he was a great doctor he ended up moves he ended up moving to the Hamptons and becoming an in-house doctor for a lot of rich people and stuff like that and he goes around like he, he ends up being like this this Hamptons doctor and gets called for house calls and stuff like that and taking care of people it's like a problem like a like a um a patient of the week type show that's exactly what this is but better <laughs> and I love royal pains like I love royal pain so much but See, I, I don't know, Brian. I, I don't really watch too much TV with humans Me either. in it. Neither, <laughs> like real people. So I, I get it. Um, that was back in the day, though. I, 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 I got to catch up on some of that stuff anyway. Like I've never watched Burn Notice, and you keep recommending it to me. I'm, I'm gonna get to it one of these days, bro. Once, Please once these do. seasons stop being so thick. <laughs> TK does that. This says I watched both of these shows, and they were fire. Yeah, Burn Notice is incredible. I fucking love that show, and Royal Pains was too. I loved it. All right, and let's talk about what we came here to talk about. It's 2024 spring mm -hmm. season. It's mm -hmm. time for us to build our, eh, there it is. Time to build our Annie list. So if you're looking on the stream or if you're listening to the podcast version, there's a video version of this podcast out now for everybody. This one isn't going to be early um, because of it's, it's just a live episode. So you can go to our YouTube, youtube.com slash at Mike Check Waifu Waifu to view the video because we have any list pulled up on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and pick right now before we get into the spring list. What was what's up, Boomin? What's up, Boomin? Just entered the chat. We're going to go through and pick what was our number one favorite show of the of the winter. Now, this doesn't count season twos and it doesn't count reoccurring shows. What was our number one favorite show of the winter? And what was our number one least favorite show of the winter? Mm hmm. Okay. Poof. No returning shows, you said, right? Be, be quiet, Crystal. It's, it's going to get done, I promise. <laughs> Crystal just said uh, the anime in progress. <laughs> Still, I <see. laughs> Listen. Hey, yo, my, mine is horrible. I know Crystal won't even look at mine. Don't even worry about it. It's not good <laughs> over, my, over there. Oh, man. Um, My number one for the 2024 winter season. I'm going to have... Go ahead, go ahead. What's up? I was just about to say, I didn't finish Undead on Luck, by the way, if y'all can't, if y'all see that in my anime in progress. An an another great uh, finale, in my opinion. Um, I, I, 
can't say dangerous in my heart. I have to say the one, it, and it's because I was just really surprised with it in general, uh, even though it looked really good. A sign of affection to me for this season specifically, it just had, it was like borderline the perfect uh, slice of life for me. Um, I loved every character in the show. Every character had a likable charm to them. Even the character who was supposed to be childish was charming in a sense. And, and I, I loved every, I loved everything about it. So a sign of affection, even the narration, man, narration for the, for, uh, <laughs> for our characters. For Yuki, um, yeah. Yeah, being being beautiful and perfect, and and then we got that finale and the uh, the side by or the back to back pose, essentially with the front front face to face pose. It was beautiful. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go with sign of affection was my favorite of the season. Mine's is easy, and for those of you y'all already know, seven time loop. Seven time loop was the biggest biggest surprise for me I've seen. Uh, probably this season for sure like and it's not even close to be honest like not even close how good like everything is versus seventh time loop um well now dr elise is up there so i guess that's kind of close but <laughs> but yes yeah, seventh time loop was absolutely incredible and shout out to uh, one of the patreon producers t money fingers who sent who tagged us in the uh the creator of seven time loop and a uh, tweet of her just expressing her excitement about what people feel about the show I like guess it was the sweetest fucking tweet I've ever read. She said, hey, sorry for my English, but she just, she breaks down like four, four or five paragraphs of, of her just talking about what she feels about her stuff being animated. And she, she's just thanking everybody that worked so hard on it. She was incredible. Like she is yeah. incredible, I should say, but that show isn't, is just perfect. It, just, it was definitely a, a surprise with that show. Cause I, I, I still, to this day, I remember that first episode. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna feel, feel this one, but I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah. And then it was good. Everything, and it was because everything you told me from that first episode got me like, okay, you know what? Let me let me take this. I don't watch Shoujo hat off because that first episode, what you told me, sounded incredible. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. touch it. I'm gonna touch it. And then I touched it, and it was way better than I ever even considered it. Like thought. It's it's very well thought out. Um, obviously, obviously, uh, and that's kind of the best part of it is that everything is so well planned out and articulated in a sense oh my god beautiful beautifully well done um and i love how established even though we got a small piece of the world but the world is still bigger than what was established within the show it was brilliant it was brilliant yeah. and then i'm gonna start with my least favorite show so i gonna give his least favorite show and then we're gonna get from chat what was y'all number one favorite show for the spring and the least favorite show my least favorite show is obviously this bullshit i put it up on the screen if you're uh, watching the video but if you're listening to the podcast version it's ninja Comboy. This shit is garbage. It's, it's so not bad. over yet. It's, it's not, not a, it, over yet. It might as well be over. It's eight episodes out of twelve or seven episodes out of twelve. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. And, and the reason why it's so bad is the the writing. Bes the fighting. Okay, let me just get the good things out the way. The fighting is is good. It's incredible until they started getting not into, over yet. Until they started getting into mechs, then it got worse. But the writing and the storytelling and the way the story is presented is presented in a way that's so fucking awful that I can't I can't believe it's this bad like it's like and and I'm a story guy first I'm a character guy first I don't care about none of the characters and the story is ass Th those are my things like I love good fights too I do love it but I can't I can't enjoy something with just good fights I need better writing and the delivery I don't know if it's because I'm watching the dub the delivery is like you you're looking at a cue card and you're reading Hygen is a Nukian and they're reading this like every, they're reading from a script and they're reading like they need hooked on fire. It's bad. It's it's a bad delivery. It's it's just terrible. So that is my least favorite show. Even though, you know, it's popular with most of the folks. So hey, it's popular. What's up, Boomy? Says he says, boy, my uh, <laughs> my guys are trying to get me to watch this. Uh wait, it it, it it disappeared. I think he deleted it. But he says guys were trying to get him to watch this, but am I dodging the bullet? Watch it and find out for yourself. Because most people love this show. This shit is awful to me, though. And everybody that knows me and knows my taste, this shit wouldn't be for me even. No, if the writing was good, it'd probably be for me. But <laughs> but it, it has everything but that. Yeah, it is it's definitely it's definitely visually a pleasing. So that's my least favorite show. It's not done, but it's not going to get any better. I can tell you that now. Um, that's my least favorite show this season. Tell what is yours? Uh, Chain Soldiers. Mm. I hate that show. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. I, I, I tried, bro. I really tried to get into it. I tried to give it a chance. Express uh, what you don't like about it. Let me find you. Uh, I'll just type it in. Nothing. I, everything. Uh, <laughs> I don't like. I don't like the characters in the slightest. Okay. Um, none of the characters felt interesting to me in terms of like what was what was my real ambition for even liking these characters and then the way that they act about everything it it, it really felt like a childish anime <laughs> it felt like it was it was supposed to be not so childish but just overly childish hmm. so yeah bro i can't i couldn't i could never get into it um i got to i'm not at the final episode yet but i'm at episode 11 okay i think so final episode i i, I can see where the story is I can see, I can see that, but no, nah, I don't like anything about anything about these characters or the world is cool, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is, it's getting there. The world is getting there. I'm not going to say it's cool, but it's getting there. But the characters themselves, which us being a more character centric, world centric, uh, podcast, the characters are, they, they've killed it for me, bro. I can't I lie to that. you. I don't like nothing about the characters. I understand that. It's more for me because of it's just, you know, I don't know it's the kind of shit I like. <laughs> I'm the edgy king up in this motherfucker, so hey, if it's etchy and harem, I'm kind of all for it. But that's, I like it. I, I like etchy and harem, but just not this one. Yeah, and that's what I like about it. Everything else is, um, I don't only, I, we don't like to use the word mid, but it's definitely mediocre to, to not there essentially. <laughs> like it's just not yeah. that good. Okay, so let's look at the chats. We got some. We got some, hey, one of the Patreon producers, our guy Frozen, he says his favorite is Seven Time Loop. What's up, JC? I don't know yeah. who JC is because this is an initial. You don't want your name to be out, but welcome to the show, brother. We appreciate you. Um, <laughs> Crystal says, I'm not picking between Signs of Affection, Seven Time Loop, and Dr. Elise. You <laughs> so, got to. <laughs> pick one, Crystal. Pick one. You ain't got no choice now. <laughs> uh, um... Oh, Adama says, uh, facts, I saw that, and that was very sweet. She's, he's talking about the seven-time Luke creator in her tweet. She was very humble and thankful. Absolutely incredible. Kai uh, he just said, damn, and he's talking about Ninja Kamui. He said it might be the dub. It, I think it, it probably is the dub. Dub delivery is ass. Maybe it'll be better and sub. Maybe I'll watch the next episode sub, and hopefully the delivery will be better. And then what's up, Boom? He says, that's exactly what I said, but I'll be saying he got to say sometimes. <laughs> And then Frozen says his worst is Bakaguri. I heard a lot of bad things about Bakaguri. Mm. Shout out to it's TCB it. and um and T Money Fingers in the Discord. And the Mike Check Discord kind of giving a lowdown of Bakaguri. It doesn't seem interesting at all. What were you about to say, Tell? Sorry, I cut you off. Oh um, no, no, I was I was uh I was trying to pull some comments from from X or Twitter. Oh, go ahead. Metallic Rouge, though. Hear me out. I, as I was saying on Metallic Rouge. I think the world in that anime is amazing. Yeah. I, I want more of the world, but I need those characters to disappear off the face of that planet. Which is crazy. <laughs> it's the main characters, man. I swear, it's those main two characters. And, and then I feel like everybody else is bearable or good. It's just those main two characters just kill the entirety of what that show is supposed to be. It, it kills the plot. It's like, what are we going towards? The world is great, but I, I can't deal with those characters. Got you. Oh, this it's Cole. It's J. Cole. Oh, what's up, dude? He gave us his favorite. He's oh, uh, what's up, Boomer says, see the what's the minimum uh we're gonna answer that question later. But J. Cole says his his favorite is signs of affection. Mm hmm Great. And his worst is Metallic Rouge. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. J. Cole says the same thing you say. Hate the MCs. Um, I almost I almost put Metallic Rouge as my as my least favorite, but I had to give Chain Soldiers over that. Oh, uh, Kai says, uh, can I count dungeons? Yeah. Yeah, Dungeon Meshi for sure, bro. Dungeon Fire. Meshi, 100%. That's a great, great, great show. What's your least favorite, Kai? Uh, young Simi says, I maybe watched 15 minutes of the dub and then conjure we and switch to, to sub. I'm starting to see what you mean about it. <laughs> Wait, let's see if it gets better story-wise. I don't think it's going to get better story-wise. You in it for the action for that one, like for sure. The action was Mo, be, mo, mo better. I was about to say mo better, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Mo better. mo better this week than it was in previous weeks, but this shit. Oh I, yeah, because you got your max finally. You were super excited about that. I definitely wasn't excited about the max, but it was it was <laughs> it was fire fire to see. Um, it was fire to see. Um, we'll we'll queue up anybody else's who want to give their least favorite and their favorites. 
But is it time tell? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's slide on over to the, Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> the spring season. Now, I, I cheated. A couple of weeks yeah. ago, I picked my sleeper. I'm not going to say what my sleeper is because we always wait till later. But I thought I was in the clear. Oh, Tell, can you uh, do me a solid? Can you go over to the Discord? There's a there's a bunch of people's sleepers in there. I think I got T Money Fingers though. Oh. So you, you don't have to pull his, but there's a I think TCBs is in there. Worse, yeah, I mean, it might be signs. You didn't like signs, Kai? Wow, that's crazy. I, what, I'm not being like a sign of affection. I lead a judge in the Judy, but I can you please elaborate on what you didn't like about signs? Unless romance is just not your thing, then I understand that completely. And I'm gonna go to Twitter and I'm gonna grab the sleepers from there. Uh, our tweets be going crazy sometimes, and sometimes I just need to get on Twitter more to see what the fuck is is everything. Shout out to Semi for the songs though. I got them songs queued up for next episodes. All right. Jeez, when they post they uh they sleepers. Oh, it, sl- it might be an episode okay. discussion. Yeah, hold on. Okay, sorry for y'all. We should have had this I, already. Y'all, y'all, y'all got paragraphs upon paragraphs. Y'all be That's talking to me. Dude, here. anime talk be going stupid. If you're not in our Discord, I think the Discord link is in the description of the video. If not, let me know and I'll drop it. But uh, Discord be going crazy. And anybody can join, obviously. It's no nothing special there. CK does nothing, gave the eyebrow raise. I watched episode six and that MC in the lead not hidden. Love romance though. Wow, Kai, that's interesting. Okay, I'm not, listen, like we always say, we lead a judge and Judy. We don't judge here. But I think we all are flabbergasted. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. Okay, we're going to start off with one of the Patreon producers, the GOAT Frozen. Frozen! He says, sleeper picks Spice and Wolf. Wait, wait, okay. wait, wait. He, he picked two. God damn it. Uh, frozen. Spice and Wolf? Oh, sp- oh let's go. More He's than picked, one. He's picked <laughs> Spice and Wolf and Bartender Glass of God. You got to pick one, Frozen. If you got to pick one, which one are you picking? And his most anticipated, a man after my own heart, Jobless Reincarnation Season 2, Part 2. Yes. Yes. What a great choice. Which one did Frozen choose? I'm waiting. He's going to type it in the chat, hopefully. Yeah, choose one, Frozen. You're going to mark it in the uh, show notes? Yeah, I'm, I'm putting it in there so we, we have it all ready. Shout out to our GOAT, Rob J from uh, Inside the Mind of a Blurred and Show Go High. He says, my sleeper is bartender. And he said, also, chilling in a, another world with level two cheat powers is getting watched. Y'all know that's my bag. Definitely, Rob J. Yeah, that's my bag, too. I'm right there with you. I'm right behind you. Um, Let's see. He picked Spice and Wolf. Good choice. Okay, okay, okay. I, I couldn't really go with Spice and Wolf because I'm already hit with the concept and the story of the original. So that's why I couldn't, I couldn't pick that. Spoilers alert for Mons. But um, Rob, one of the Patreon producers for, uh, from Dad Needs to Talk podcast. Make sure y'all check out Dad Needs to Talk podcast. It says, my sleeper is uh, grandpa and grandma turn young again. Seems like it could be a wholesome watch. And his most anticipated is Loser Ranger. I hope they do it justice with this anime. Man, he be oh, what did Rob choose? He chose uh, uh, grandpa and grandma turn young again. I didn't even see that one. You didn't? No, I didn't see that one on here. Very popular in our Discord as well. Very, very mm. popular. Shout out to Shonen Bump. He says, my sleeper is Windbreaker. Although I love to pick Kaiju number eight or Loser Ranger, but I can't because I read them already. See, people be getting people be getting slick with what they do. They add the ones that they yeah. know about and say, yeah, these, this would be my sleeper. <laughs> ah, I see what y'all, y'all motherfuckers are smooth. I, I, see, I appreciate I it. I didn't choose Windbreaker because I saw it uh, being tweeted about a month or two ago. Mm. So I was like, I can't choose that. Mm. <laughs> you know, we'll never just pick one when you ask me since they says, God damn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Safir, one of the pages our producer says, Jellyfish can't swim at night. I was conflicted between this and many sides of a voice actor radio. I'm so sick of y'all. I'm so sick of y'all. <laughs> Safir guy even snuck his in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I love y'all. Yo. I appreciate y'all standing by my side. Y'all are all demons. <laughs> all of y'all. Don't make me pick Blue Lock as my sleeper. 
I mean, do that if you want to. You lost. Um, you got to watch it. Oh, shit. That's right. It's a movie, though. I'll watch a movie. Uh, Huey TJ oh, yeah. says, <laughs> Huey TJ says, shout out to Huey TJ. He says, Remaster from the description. It sounds like another isekai. I'm addicted. And I retweeted, Welcome to the family. And Godfather. Mm. We are addicted to, uh, to isekai as well. Okay, let me, let's go back to the chat real quick while he queue up the Discord once. Um, Safir says his least favorite was, wow, undead, uh, unwanted undead adventurer. I enjoyed it, but it, not until the later half. And my favorite will probably be the wrong way to use healing magic. Wow, okay. The wrong way of using healing magic is really fucking good, by the way. But undead unwanted adventurer is fantastic. I'm shocked. I thought that would have been in Safir, uh, it was just one, but you also had to add in the voice actor once of here. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like that. I like that. Except for Undead and One Adventurer. I'm 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 kinda conflicted on you not liking that one. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that, insane. TK does not to say his favorite was Signs of Affection and Dungeon Meshi. And then his worst was Ninja Kamui. TK does nothing. My guy. My guy. And then TK does nothing also gives his sleeper. He says unnamed unnamed memory. And the crow that does not choose the Lord. The crow that does not choose the Lord. We're gonna go in, we're gonna go over the entire spring season, by the way. We're just going through the sleeper picks of the listeners first before we do that. But that's interesting. That's that's one I haven't even seen. I'm gonna go with T Money Fingers, one of the Patreon producers. He says for, for my sleeper, oh yeah, he says for my sleeper, going through it all, all the new stuff tonight, but I wanted to pick something now that could be fun and different. So I'm picking grandpa and grandma turn young again. Watch a few trailers and it looks like it'd uh, be a good turn your brain off and enjoy the wholesome comedy. See, see, that's crazy because that's not what he said. He said, I have no clue if it'll be any good, but I'll take a train to the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he picked two gotta, different sleepers in two pick different one, places. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> two buddy figures, also a demon. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Where is... I got to find Crystals. Crystals is somewhere in here. Shout out to Crystal for tweeting that a ReZero trailer, too. That should, I shouldn't have watched it. I should have saved it for the uh, Patreon, but... Our, uh, our archivist, uh, Death Scythe, or Christian, yeah. Unnamed memory will be my sleeper, but please, someone pick Change the End of the World <laughs> or Studio <laughs> Apartment, Good Lighting Angel included, <laughs> as their sleepers. They were close for my sleeper picks based on the description. Mm. Uh, so I did tell him ahead of time that we don't choose anything that we know about already uh, for sleepers because he Yo, reads a lot of manga too. Oh yeah, he reads a lot, like a lot so more than anybody I, I know. Make sure I gotta make sure he don't uh, <laughs> uh, get one that he already knows. I don't think he reads more than Dad needs to talk, but I think he reads a lot. <laughs> right. Um, I got Crystal's here. She says, "Just in case something happens tomorrow, and I can't make it. Thankfully, you're here and you're all good." But she says, uh, "I'm sharing this now. A sleeper, a condition called love, and her most anticipated." Uh, the goat is back, so of course I'm going to choose the Misfit Demon King Academy Core Two. Yeah, she got hell of a taste. I tell you that much. I'm telling you. All right, that's it for Twitter. Tell got some more in Discord. Uh, those were two. I think that's the only two we had. TK does nothing. Chose two sleepers. By the way, he. That's crazy. Is out here choosing all of them. <laughs> yeah, it was going off trailers. A lot of, I mean, I guess some of the trailers are good. I also avoid trailers. I just go off Me the too. description and the name because I don't want to be uh too influenced. Me too. Yeah. So the, what I might see. So the rules of 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 the anime list is for us to pick one sleeper and. We never do this, but we need to make sure we do this. Go back and, and, and grade y'all sleeper picks that y'all chose during like the midterms or something. But we always the, the sleepers we pick is something we never heard of. Like we never seen a trailer for. We never read the manga. We pick it absolutely no idea what it's about in order to find something that we think that other people should also check out to add to the list to maybe kind of expand your 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 horizons of anime because we all know about Konosuba and Demon Slayer and Jobless Reincarnation and, and Reincarnated as a Slime. We know about those shows, right? Everybody knows about those shows. But we try to find shows that are down there in the bottom of the list. I'm like, huh, what's that? Or what's that? And try to determine on if 
you know, is something good or not. So keep in mind, whenever we call for sleepers, that's what we that's what we're referring to. We we try to pick one only for the simple fact is because the sleepers has to be watched all the way through. Like that's the mm-hmm. rule, even if they're bad. And if for those who listen to all of our podcast episodes, like Simi Sensei, um, some of them bad. Tell picked a lot of bad ones. I can't even hold you. Fight me. <laughs> Tell picked a lot, a lot of ones where we had to sit through and, and truck through it. But we knew that we couldn't recommend that to y'all because it was it was just that bad. So while like I could still look at stuff objective, like even though I hate Ninja Kamui, I wouldn't say don't watch it. I would say, hey, listen, if you're into this type of thing, watch it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that's that's kind of the point of, of of the way we do this. For those of you who are new to this, by the way, mostly for the podcast listeners, everybody here knows how we do things, but mostly for them. All right, so let's get into the list, man. Tell, spring is actually looking kind of decent. When I scrolled through it, when I cheated and scrolled through it a couple of weeks back, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't as impressed. I wasn't as impressed. You know, I, I'm like, okay, it doesn't seem as big as winter, and it's probably because... I, Jay Sawyer says I did not finish the Wish in the Beast yet. I really want you to let me know if it Man. got any better. But I ain't I ain't even re- restarted that one yet. It it might be this season might have more of the uh shows we know about than not than any other season we've been through, right? Like yeah, obviously which is crazy. Which is yeah, I, I do believe that too. I like Konosuba, like we people know about Konosuba, even though I only watched to episode six of season one, which I plan to go back and watch, by the way. Um, Kona Super season three, I do plan on catch, uh, catching up to that and watching that probably, to be honest, for next week to know. But anybody watch Kona Super? Let, let me know in the chat if y'all watch Kona Super. Oh, J. Colt. Did you forget J. Colt? Was, I think his was in the Discord as well. He might have been in anime talk, though. But he says, uh, let me get Mysterious Disappearance for his sleeper. He okay, did. yeah, I mean, he did mention that in Discord. Okay, got you. And then, yeah, so Kona Super. Anybody hip to Kona Super? Because, I, I, again, I only watched up to episode six in, in season one. I yeah, I've only fire. watched season one. And I've heard nothing but great things about it. Uh, but I've only watched season one. The whole thing? Yep. What you think? <laughs> it, it was hilarious. But I mean, you got a podcast. I, so you gotta I, let me know. I only I only watched season one, so for me, it wasn't compelling enough for me to continue. Mm. Although a lot of people say a lot of really good things about it, it just season one was enough for me to be like, okay, that was cool. But it, you know, that like for instance, at the time when I watched Konosuba, I, it was like when I was watching Noragami, and Noragami forced me to like want to watch mm. more because it was so good. So even though. Uh, it was what, like a year or maybe maybe a year and a half after I watched Noragami, Konosuba did not feel like something that was forcing me to want to come back to it, if I that see. makes sense. Yeah, at that time, it just wasn't the time for it, essentially. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Kai says, uh, he says, yeah, I watched it. What you think? TK does nothing. Says, I tried to watch Konosuba, but dropped it after episode three. What made you drop it? I don't know why I dropped it either, to be honest. I think I just... I think I started just playing a video game and fucking forgot to <laughs> forgot to pick it back up. <laughs> which, is, okay. which is my life, by the way. Regular polo. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and then you got Demon Slayer, which doesn't come out for a while. We got 48 days before they even touch, so it's almost It'll go quick. It's almost damn near summer. All right. Frozen says, uh, I watched a few episodes and had to uh go back and restart. Yeah, I'm 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 you trying to do that with me next week, Frozen? We just watch the whole thing and then we 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 <laughs> we figure out what we think. <laughs> oh, what of uh, that Witch and the Beast? No, hell no. Screw Witch and the Beast. Drop that completely. Let's let's kick that off your list. Let's try to watch Konosuba. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll rewatch the first season and watch uh, second and third season. I think it's up to three seasons now. I'm down for that. That'd be fire. That'd be fire. But the uh, the training Hashira arc. I heard this is only like eight chapters though. I'm definitely looking forward to it, but it's definitely not my most anticipated. I think anybody that listens to the podcast know what our most anticipated is, right? Like we would assume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the same, it's, right? It's the Blue Lock movie. Yeah. I'm looking for a new co-host to Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Anybody out there? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, to be honest, there's there's a lot of things we could cho- choose for our most anticipated because like the, for one, the, the top three of the list, the 
the top four. Right? <laughs> Let's exclude Konosu, but the top three on the list is Demon Slayer, Jobless Reincarnation Season 2, Core 2, and Reincarnated as a Slime. You know what I'm saying? So, like, those can definitely be, like, our most anticipated, all three of them. But you also got uh, My Hero Academia Season 7. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a good season. That's definitely going to be a good season. Um, for the stuff that we know is coming back, that's going to be fire. Um, but I, I don't know how I feel about it yet, because I already know what's coming for that. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it in comparison to Jobless Reincarnation Core 2. Mm. Yeah, I think I think the most anticipated for me is definitely Jobless Reincarnation Core 2. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be real with you. As much as I like uh, Reincarnated as a slime, Jobless Reincarnation is just, to me, this is Polo personally, is leagues above. Actually, let me take that back. Th- this season of My Hero Academia, I think it's going to start off fire. And I'm, I'm, what I, I think I just did was I let the manga disappoint me so much that uh, I'm taken away from this season. Mm. I think this season is going to be fire. Um, don't, don't listen to me. This season is going to be fire. <laughs> don't listen to what I said previously. You're, 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 uh, what's the opposite of rose-colored glasses? Because of the manga, the disappointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The manga. shady, shady tinted glasses, salty, <laughs> polarized, a that's, little tilted, cracked cra- in the lens. That's crazy. That's crazy. I, I'm shocked that it got that bad for you in the manga. I, again, I haven't read the manga. That's the kind of the dynamic with our My Hero conversation. He read the manga. He's fully caught up. I read none of it. Um, so that's interesting because I, I didn't like season four and five. Loved season six. I thought that shit was absolutely incredible. It was like it stepped up leagues. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to seven after what we got in six. I think seven's gonna be great. You think so? Okay. I think nine is gonna be garbage. Or eight. Eight and nine might be garbage. Mm. It's gonna be that many more seasons? No, it might really just be one more, but I, I think the end of nine or whatever is going to be after this might be garbage. And that's my personal opinion. Could be fired to everybody else. I think I might've had enough by that time, but <laughs> we, we shall see. We might not have enough after this season and then you're going to get to the next season and be like, okay, I've had enough. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Like I said, that's my opinion. That's just what I'm reading. Kaiju number eight. I hear a lot of great things about this. Yes. What do you think? Uh, I, I was supposed to read this. I'm glad I did not. Me too. Because at least from the panels that I saw uh, from my meathead life, this is going to hit all of that. Mm. So I'm hype. I'm hype because I feel like it's going to satiate the meathead in me. So yes. Extremely but, excited for it. Not most anticipated, but extremely excited. I can't even ask you that question because you didn't read it. Yeah, but, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to. For those, I, I did, but I didn't. For those of you who kind of know my taste a little bit, and who are familiar with kaiju number eight eight what i like this more than undead unluck because y'all know how i feel about undead Unluck. i'm not a fan it's just not my shit shonen is not my shit for those of you who are new here shonen is not my shit but i feel like this would be more my shit but i'm not sure anybody I, read this I, is familiar with it think that it might be my shit let's read the synopsis let's do it with the All highest right, ca- oh you got it Go ahead. Oh, you, you got it Kaiju number eight. With the highest kaiju emergence rates in the world, Japan is no stranger to attack by deadly monsters. Okay. Entered the Japan Defense Force, a military organization tasked with the neutralization of kaiju. Kafka Habino, a kaiju corpse cleanup man, has always dreamed of joining the force. But when he gets another shot at achieving his childhood dream, he undergoes an unexpected transformation. How can he fight kaiju now that he's become one himself? Oh, shit. He... He transform? Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's just giant meaty meaty mechs. It's it's Attack on Titan. Oh no! It's it's sounding like Chainsaw Man. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know. Kai says, "Eh." He's like, eh, yeah. I don't know. "Yeah." I, don't I can know. feel that. I, I'm gonna watch it. I don't think I mind giant meat mechs because it's Attack on Titan. Oh, but wait, TK does nothing. Says I'm reading it now, and it might actually work for you. Great world okay. building, great characters. That's all I need. You know what I'm saying? And that's all you need. That's all I need is great characters, great world building. It's less sillier than Undead Unluck. I like that. And that's perfect. That's perfect. I like that, actually. Even though, like I said, I love this this finale of Undead Unluck. 
this is everything I wanted in that episode. But if it's more serious the whole way through, that could definitely be a much better uh, conversation for this podcast. Yeah, for sure. I, the silly shit none done look is it frustrates me to no end. <laughs> to no end. <laughs> like uh, there had to be an end. The season over. You still frustrated? I mean, I didn't watch the last episode. I guess I'll find out. Oh uh, my then, god! If, save it for the conversation oh. next week. Oh um, my god! <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about the goat. Anos Voldi goat though. Yeah. Yeah. Misfit yeah. Demon King, see, uh, uh, Demon King Academy Two, Core Two. What's funny is that I thought it could have ended and been done at the first core. I thought it was over. Like I was satisfied and satiated with what we got. I did not expect it to get a Core Two. So, am I yes. excited? Absolutely. Yes. Am I worried? Absolutely. Because I mean, w- what's next? You know, uh, like. Like, where do we go from here? Because I feel like we kind of went there. That ain't for us to, that ain't for us to know. That's just for us to find out. That's exactly. why we're here. Exactly. It's very we're interesting. to find out what's next. It's very interesting because I, I'm, it's kind of concerning to, to see that it, it keeps going, even though it necessarily doesn't need to. And they don't even have a, like a proper synopsis for it. So I couldn't even dig into it, even if I so, wanted to, but. So I, I know you're hyped for a regular magic high school season three. Yes. Regular Magic High School was one that I picked up, what was it, about four or five months ago or something like that? Watched the whole thing dubbed. I love the dub of it because this is one of the shows, including, this is a couple of shows in my arsenal that I just can't do the sub only because it's so much fucking dialogue. And I'm, and mind you, I'm a fast reader. I don't have a problem with reading the subtitles, but it's so much dialogue and just different stuff that's a part of the world and characters and, and, uh, something's right. over here. You got to go over there, and this is this, this is how this works. This is how this magic power is so much that I gotta watch it dubbed. Like it's 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 just better for me dubbed. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to this one, but this is a dubbed and done kind of anime for me personally. I love the voices they used to. Great, great show. Crystal, I know Crystal. Are you excited for this one? I don't know if she uh was it Crystal. Yeah, it was Crystal that was watching it. I think. Yeah, Kai says I'm surprised that it's still going. Talking about uh. Misfit Demi King Academy, me too. It's very strange. Right? Yeah, and, and like you said, you you can only hope they don't mess it up. But I don't, I don't think they will, man. They haven't disappointed us yet. That's interesting. Um, Irregular Magic High School doesn't have much of a synopsis, but it says after the battle against the new breed front, Tatsu and Mik- uh, Miyuki enter the new magic engineering department. So they're in a whole other department, which should be very interesting. I'm looking forward to that. One. Like I said, I gotta wait till it's dubbed and done, though. I even watched a movie to a regular Magic High School too. I was, I was, I was all in it. See, I ain't, I ain't even got that far. I only watched the first season. I haven't touched that one either. But I think uh, I was so uh, drawn in by Shariva Fell Night that nothing else mattered. Oh man, you bugging? You were missing out on a lot then. I That's ain't, the I ain't saying. I, I'm just saying Shariva Fell Night really got me. Oh, he says a regular too. Yeah, regular is uh, I'm surprised that's still going to, but I can see how that can continue because there's still a lot of uh unto- unturned stones within irregular magic high school. No, no, I do want to say this real quick because I didn't see this one coming. Ba- Black Butler, yeah, public school arc. Me either. Did, I thought did that you was... see that coming this year? No, I ain't even, I ain't no. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I thought that was long done. Yeah. Uh, but hear and me out. Not that it was finished, right? Not that the the anime was the first season of the anime was finished, but the fact that I thought it was just canceled. I thought it was over. So fair. does this mean we we go back and and rewatch Black Butler? No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> That's just Is it, how, I'll do it. You'll do it. I yeah, I'll, do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. There's a movie. There's a movie prequel too. It looks like in Black Butler. Black Butler was just not my jam. Yeah. I, I guess I can feel like I can, I can see what that is. I can see what, I <laughs> Guy can. says, uh, <laughs> by popular demand, <laughs> in quotations. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Uh, I watched season one, but dropped it in the middle of season two. Are you talking about um, Black Butler or something else? Uh, another one that I'm excited for that I know ain't nobody excited for but me because it's a polo ass anime. The fifth season of Data Life. 
I love the, I love the show. It's uh, again, it's a polo ass anime. It's not it's not great. I, I will say that it is not great, and I can't say I'm recommend it. I only recommend it to people who I know taste kind of aligns with mine. But it's the it's the edgy harem that I fucking love, and eh. it's just it's just me. All right, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Ain't no shame in my game. No cap in my rap. So, I, Data Live, I'm excited for it. I'll be the only one to say it. All right, leave me alone. All right, <laughs> moving on. I think that's oh it for God. all the stuff we're aware of this right. season. Right, all, all oh, the return and stuff. Um, we bugging. We bugging. Mission Yosa Core family. What? Mission Yosa Core family is up there with probably one of our, some of our most anticipated. Oh, irregular. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I like the regulars. Real good. I, I thought Mission Yosa Core family was a, a given for us, but as y'all know. We are Mission Yosa Kora family over here. We love that. Um, and that was our first mic check manga, Mission Yosa Kora family. And we're happy to see that. That was in the beginning of the podcast. Episode what, bro? Like 10, 10? or something like that. Yep. Yeah, we, we were right there. So not even very long into the podcast been going, been going on. The first manga we decided to read on the podcast was Mission Yosa Kora family. And we finally get to see it be animated. So I'm hyped for that. Just I mean, we both hyped off off of that just off principle alone. So that's hype. I stopped reading it at about chapter fifty or so, like fifty five. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna everything we're gonna get in the season one is going to be everything we've seen. Um, but this is definitely one of the most anticipated for us. But for like for those of you that don't know about Mission Yosa Core Family, it has everything we like. But to me personally, actually funny. You know, I like Undead Unluck. Like it's much more of a of a comedy. It, I know I saw people comparing it's it. It's a to, wild ride. Yeah, I saw people comparing it to Spy Family, and it's not it's not there. It's not like that at all. It's completely different. Um, but in a way, it's very intriguing. So if you're not familiar with Mission Yosa Core Family, so it's, it's going to be a great show. Comes out in two weeks or so thirteen days. Looking forward to that. It's more serious than Spy Family, but like. I, to me, I'm going to say it's, it's, it feels like more fun, too. But I feel no. like it's more serious. You don't think it's more serious than Spy Family? It, funny enough, no. They're both silly. But Mission Yosa Core Family takes the silly to a crazy level only because, you know, the older brother. I, I mean, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? The, the, the sister. Like, they all do some silly shit. Like, it's that's, so <laughs> it's so funny. I guess fun. I'm thinking about the, the, the talking dog. And then I also think about... No spoilers on Mission Yosa Kora family. I'm those, thinking about the family. Yeah, those are light compared to what's going on here. <laughs> that like, wow. And then the whole, wild. the whole house just, you know, I'm not going to get into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No spoilers, bro. The house is even a fucking character. That's all I'm going to say. But it's dope. It's a dope show or a dope manga. Spoilers. So, <laughs> slight. <laughs> all right. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it of all the stuff we know about. Now we get into the part of the show where we talk about. We just find the most obscure shit. And I want to start off with a lot of people's sleeper, including one of the producers, T Money Fingers. And who else said, uh, a bunch of people said, Grandpa and Grandpa turn young again. I think it was uh, uh, Dad Needs to Talk. Um, a few other people. Sorry, my memory's bad. And I've been, I've been drinking. Um, but here it is the story of uh, G San and uh, G San Bansan. What the? F- wait, wait a minute. Let me do this again. The story of G San Bansan. Waka Guri follows. <laughs> what the? F- I guess that's the grandpa and grandpa turn young again. I guess that's the Japanese title of it. But it follows Shozu and Ine, an elderly couple who is living a quiet life in a farming village in uh, Amori Prefecture. After eating a mysterious apple they <laughs> that they discover on their farm, on their apple farm, Shozu and Ine spontaneously regain their youth. But even after reinvigorating their uh, reinvigorating, they continue to live the life of the grandparently at a grandparently place. That's interesting. OK, that's the first time I read that. So, yeah, that sounds like a polo ass anime, too, to be they fair. chilling as as old people. That's they, all it is. They, so they're young. They eat this mysterious apple and they turn young again. That's actually interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Added to watching. Yeah, the, I added too, bro. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with any lists, whenever you're creating your uh, your lists, what you want to do is you want to always set it to watching instead of like planning because planning, it goes into a list that kind of goes into the void. But you want to set it as watching. The reason why you want to set it as watching because once I hit save and it's set as watching, I go to home and it shows up as my anime in progress. 
So when a new episode comes out, when episode one of Grandpa and Grandpa Turn Young Again drops, it goes up to airing and it pops populates with the uh, with the little red bar to show you that, hey, it's ready to be watched. So that's how I keep track of all my anime. I got a YouTube video on our YouTube about how I keep track of my anime that I probably should update, but I digress. But that's how I keep that's how we keep track of, of what we do there. That's an interesting one. So uh, I'm going to give this one a try. I, I, I know this ain't going to be specifically in um, Polo's realm of things, but whisper me a love song. Talk to so me. hear me out. <laughs> After performing a song at her school's opening ceremony, musician Yori Asanagi receives an apparent love confession from a freshman, Hamari Kino. But just as Yori decides she wants to return Hamari's feelings, Hamari reveals that she did not love her, but admires her. But can't you can't unring a bell once struck, and Yori is determined to make Hamari fall for her, not just her music. Will their hearts ever beat as one, or will their love fall out of tune? So I know two things. This ain't Polo. No. Uh, but one of the things I know he ain't gonna like is music. Uh, so that's this exactly is a musical right. anime. Uh, I'm about to sit here. I'm gonna I'm rock with. It. I'm gonna see see what it's like. But this is one of those uh, shoujo category. I just like just like music, boy love. I don't like girls love. I, I I just none of those gel with me properly. I said that about shoujo too. And here I am fucking beaming up seven time loop and and, and Dr. Elise <laughs> like this fucking nobody's business. So I could change. And what's great about what's great about what we do is I don't have a fucking problem with changing, saying I'm wrong about anything. Like I I love that shit. I love being wrong because I want to find nothing but great anime. <laughs> like that's but my that's goal. That's why I chose it. That's why I chose it. Cause I ain't never watched nothing like this. So I'm gonna give it a go. And to be fair, the first slice of life I watched was recommended by Polo, other than Hamtaro, because I do love Hamtaro. Uh, the first slice of life I watched, I don't care. It's a slice of life. It's supernatural. <laughs> the first slice of life I watched was because of Polo, and it was uh, Your Lie in April. And for me, I loved it. I thought the musical aspect of it was amazing. I thought the story was amazing. All that stuff. Uh, but I'm going to give this a go and see what it's like. I don't, I mean, it's girls love. They ain't going to bother me none. So here we go. Uh, I'll let y'all know what I think about it. J. Cole says, for our Sojo this season, we got Whisper Me a Love song in Condition Called Love. And then Kai says, <clears throat> a Condition Called Love might be good. It might be. It might be. All right. Looking at the list here. <laughs> Going deeper into the list. Spice and Wolf. Merchant meets Wise Wolf. Now, this is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a remake of, yeah, it's a remake of Spice and Wolf. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, Spice and Wolf, uh, Merchant meets a Wise Wolf. Lawrence is traveling merchant selling various goods from a horse-drawn cart. One day, he, is, he arrives at a village and meets a beautiful girl with ears and a tail of an animal. Her name is Holo, the wise wolf, and she brings bountiful harvests. She wishes to return to her homeland, and Lawrence offers to, ta Lawrence offers to take her. Now the once lovely merchant and the, uh, and the once lovely wolf, wise wolf begin their journey north. I'm definitely going to watch it, only because I love the original. <laughs> Um, the original was was like at that time was one of my favorite shows. Like it was probably would have been in my top five. Can you call it slice of life? I guess you could, right? Even though it's like gods and stuff. Yeah, I mean that, that don't change slice of life. It's just not slice of our life. Adventure fantasy romance is where it is. So not really slice of life, but I you know it it could be in, in that. It was in my top five list for a very long time before I watched, what, a total 700-something anime at the start of this podcast. Oh, oh Love it. Start adding stuff to your repertoire. You can't even watch it no more. Exactly. All right. Um, well, since it was brought up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a condition called love. Talk to him. I'm going to watch it. Here we go. A condition called love. Futaro Hanase is a first year in high school that has a great family and wonderful friends, but not much luck when it comes to romance. One day, she happens to see the hot boy from the class next door, Hananoi, get dumped. Seeing Hananoi standing in the middle of a park all alone, Hotaro decides to hand him an umbrella. The little act causes Hananoi to ask her out soon after. What does love even mean? What does it mean to be in love? Hataro is flustered at suddenly being asked out by Hananoi Guy. Can we change his name or a shorter <laughs> name or something like that? I won't call him Noi. Uh, 
who has an endless amount of love for the person he loves and wants to do everything he can for them. This is a story about first love between a girl who doesn't understand romantic love and a boy that may be a bit love bombing. That's not in there. I just added the love bombing part. Yeah, very interesting. A condition called love might be good. Yeah, I do think it will be good, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, Simi Sensei, one of the producers, says, all right, all right, y'all, I got to go to sleep from work or, or for work. I assume I'll uh, catch up with the rest of the, when the pod drops. Have a good night. Thanks, brother. We appreciate you Much for love. supporting us and uh, showing love like you always do, man. It means the world. Thank you. Um, yeah, the condition called love. I'm definitely looking forward to that one for sure. Easy. Me oh, yeah. Let me. Sorry. I had to set Mr. Yo's quarter family to watch him because I'm a doofus and didn't do that sooner. <laughs> let's talk about. Let's talk about. Something that we ain't. Uh, let me see here. It's really not that much to be honest, but I'll I'll go ahead and talk about it. I was reincarnated as the seventh prince, so I can yeah. take my time perfecting my magical magic ability. Holy shit, these titles are crazy. The yeah. qualities value most in the study of magic are bloodline, aptitude, and effort. There was one sorcerer who, despite his deep love for magic, was born a commoner and thus lacked the bloodline and aptitude for it. As he died an unnatural death, he wished he studied magic more while he had the chance. Then he was reincarnated as Lloyd, the seventh prince of the kingdom of Salum, Salum, I'm assuming, and, uh, and one blessed with strong magical bloodline. Reborn with all his memories intact, along with the perfect bloodline and immense talent, he was determined to enjoy his new life using his extraordinary magical ability to master the study of magic that was beyond his reach in his previous life. Very, it's a very polo and tail anime. It's an isekai. Yes. We love isekais here. We will not shy away from our love for isekais because like, to, and to be fair, we know that isekais get a bad rap and we know they're not for everybody, but there are some <laughs> isekais that we found that are pure gas that we try to talk up as much as possible that deserves it. And I think, this could be one. What was that one? Um, what was the assassin that? one. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, the world's finest assassin was fire. Uh -huh. What was the uh, the the doctor one? Uh, uh, damn, I, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, Crystal, Crystal knows. Crystal will probably say it in chat in about 15 seconds. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that was a fire one too. There, parallel was, World we, Pharmacy. I, yeah, I beat, I beat Crystal. Pharmacy. We watched a ton of uh, just. A lot of decent slice of life. The uh or Isekai's? Yeah, Isekai, sorry. Um but yeah, the world the the nation builder. I thought we were just talking about that one. The one that Crystal <laughs> gave us the name for that we keep forgetting. Uh I King, swear. Kingdom Fucking shit. Our memory. I'm sorry, probably. we watched so many Isekai, it's hard to and it, the names are never easy. Never <laughs> That's, easy a fact. That's the crazy part. <laughs> the names are never easy. That's a fact. One that um one that got a lot. Oh, I'm gonna let you. Was it me or you? It's you. Oh, uh, you just went. Uh, all right, all right. Um, chilling in another world with a level two super cheap power. <laughs> that's the one Rob J said is gonna watch. So hear me out. Because that's because, his bag. You know, it's also our bag as well. Right, right. Um, just because he's a guy, never have easy names. Don't mean I I can't read it. The realest right. hero who rebuilt the kingdom. Yes, the magic kingdom of Kill Road. Summons hundreds of heroes from other worlds every year to fight in their war against the Dark One and his army of powerful demons. Bonanza is one of those heroes, summoned from the royal capital, Paluma. But something's not right. Bonanza is only an average merchant. He has no magic, no fighting ability, and his stats are abysmal. <laughs> God damn, he sucked. Alright. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. My scrolling ain't working right. All right, his stats are abysmal. Worse, a mishap leaves him unable to return home, rejected as a hero, and stranded in another world, abandoned to the far reaches of the kingdom by a cruel king who just wants him gone. God dang, <laughs> Bonanza's fate looks pretty bleak. But what will happen once the failed, once the failed hero candidate uh, finds himself with super cheap powers once he hits level two? Mm. That's all it took was level two. That's interesting. It's definitely going to go on the watch list for us. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that was already added. Oh, one that was a uh, part of somebody's sleeper. I can't again. I can't remember who it was. 
but it says, uh, it says, jellyfish can't swim in the night. This reminds me of Call of the Night already, but I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis. I want to find what I enjoy. Shibuya is a city full of identity. It is here on Shibuya's late night streets that illustrator Mahori Kozuki, former idol, Kano Yama, Yamanochi, VTuber, Kiwi Watose, Jesus, and composer make him Anuk Taikakashi for <laughs> young women. <laughs> on, bro. I'm saying I did my fucking thing on those names. You ain't gonna take that away from me. <laughs> for young women who, who slightly out, who slightly outside the world, join together and form an anonymous artist group called Jili. I also wants to shine like someone else. If it's not me, but we, the we might be able to shine. I don't know what the fuck this is about. It's a musical, I assume. It's about a bunch of famous girls creating an anonymous group is what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, yeah that's what it looks like. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Uh, yeah, it has no like tags to it on any list, which is actually surprising. I'm going to let you watch it, and I'm going to let Crystal watch it, and then I'm going to comment on the show what you think, and I'm going to comment on Crystal's adding list to see what she thinks. And go from there. That's kind of how I find a lot of my anime. <laughs> Guy says, eh. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie. It do sound mad, eh. But I'm gonna <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> yeah. You know how some things be mad decent? Like, mad decent ain't that bad. It's mad decent. But that was mad, mad eh. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but, but Crystal says uh, it seems like room. a... Crystal says it seems like a coming of age story, which was like the show we didn't think we would love and we rated extremely high that we just watched yeah. recently that I can't remember the name for. Uh, yeah. So that's intriguing. Let's go with uh, Unnamed Memory. Unnamed Memory was another one that uh, people chose as a sleeper or as the off sleeper because they were choosing multiple picks because they didn't listen to the rules. But that's I digress. Unnamed Memory. My wish as a champion is for you to descend the tower and be my wife. Oh, shit. Hold on. I'm in. I'm invested. Climbing a deadly tower. Oscar seats the power of its master. The witch of the azure moon. He hopes her incredible magic can break a curse that will kill any woman he takes for a wife. But the prince sees how beautiful Tanisha is. Tanisha is. <laughs> Tanisha. I, I just love my African show. Uh, <laughs> Tanisha is. Though he, he, has, he has a better idea since she's surely strong enough to survive his curse. She should just marry him instead. Tanisha isn't keen on the idea but agrees to live with Oscar in the royal castle for a whole year while researching the spell placed on the prince. The witch's pretty face hides several lifetimes of dark secrets. However, secrets that, ooh, that begin to resurface. Interesting. Unnamed memory might be a fucking sh a hit. Mm. A place further than the universe. Thanks, Sophia. I appreciate you. <laughs> Guys, like she's Tanisha now. Fuck it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, she I, is Tanisha now. She's Tanisha now. <laughs> All right. So I had to look at this, right? Um, because this next one I'm about to bring up is by Cloud Hearts, who made the Ice Blade Sorcerer Show. Oh. Rule. Oh god. Um, the Great Cleric. Mm. They're making a Wish Me a Love song this season, which looks like it might be phenomenal, at least artistically. This is a brand new studio, by the way. It is. And they've already got four animators built after this season. The New Gate. Mm, they're doing the New Gate? Yeah, the New Gate. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. This might be garbage then. Uh, it, listen, hey. listen, it's no offense to the studio. I like. I, Ice Blade Source Room was definitely animated very poorly. It was terrible. It looked awful. But I did enjoy the story of it, right? Like, I, I did yeah. enjoy the moment you to moment. You were for that story. I was, but it looked god awful. Even I, even a guy who's not, don't give a fuck about animation that much, was stunned by how bad it looked. Like, that's how crazy it was. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and read this. The New Gate. 
An online game transported into a, transformed into a life and death struggle for his player, so is Soul Art. Thanks to the valiant efforts of Shin, the most powerful of them all, so is Soul Art. An end to the game and freedom for everyone seemed within reach, so is Soul Art. But just moments after Shin defeats the game's final boss, he finds himself bathed in the unknown light and transported some 500 years into the future of the game in-game world that's so unique not soul art that's um, overlord no <laughs> right throw <laughs> it's elfheim um thrown from a simple game gone wrong into a strange new land one young sword woman of unrivaled strength is about to embark on a legendary journey hey it I could don't, be good it could, it could be, be good, good man it let's could not be let's good. not prejudge it it's the the story begins with sword art but ends probably after that second episode with the sword art you know yeah Take parallel mm -hmm. so realistically it it has its own stance it could be fire we don't know yet though very very interesting though I, you had me after it said ported 500 years forward because that screams overlord to me because and this i don't i haven't read overlord so i don't know 100 percent fact i do love that show i feel like that's what happened to eins eins was ported and like set he said i'll wait for the dub tk does nothing i would agree with that I, mm -hmm. I think it's going to. I think he's been ported further into the future of the world of uh of of what Overlord takes place in. So that's intriguing. Let's go to something else I heard about from listeners. Windbreaker. Oh, here we go. Windbreaker reminded me of something that I think I thought Crystal would pick because it reminds me of K. I'm just looking at the art, but I yeah. digress. Um, we know where, Crystal loves like K. Crystal loves K. Where the average scores are the lowest, but the fights are the strongest, Furin High School is renowned for a super, uh, for a super school of delinquents. Akaru Sakara, a first-year student, came from the outside, uh, came from outside the city to fight to the top. However, Furin School has become a group that protects the town called, <clears throat> sorry, called the Chime of the Windbreaker, Bafurin. I don't know what the fuck that. Word in there for, but the heroic legend of the high school delinquent Sakara begins here. This looks extremely intriguing, almost kind of like it more intriguing than Tokyo Revengers is, but it's probably going to end up like High Card, which is Crystal's least favorite, by the way, which I forget to mention earlier. Sorry, Crystal. High Card was not good. Uh, high Card was terrible. So I'm thinking that this is this is going to look like Tokyo Revengers, but be as bad as High Card. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I hope you're wrong too. Me too. Because I, I want I want a good version of this. You know what I mean? Me too. Because everything that's they talking in this one seems fire. But yeah, my I got a Jones in my bones and a saying nah, I don't. This ain't gonna be it. But my Jones has been wrong before, so um, <laughs> we gonna hope for the best there. You already talked about chilling in the cheat world. I forgot to say that. Watching. I feel like that's already a, a ton of stuff we're gonna watch this season. There, there's, Man. there's still more. I know. I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't, we ain't even touched on it yet. Uh, I, I've added stuff that we haven't even talked on yet. But uh, give me one second. I'm adding this to the list. I'll, I'll read this then. As a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. Another one of those ones that might be it. Yeah. Crystal says, I also predict that that show might go left talking about Windbreaker. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know about that one, Chief. All right. But as a reincarnated aristocrat, I use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. Fuck these titles. Uh, our protagonist, Ars Luvant, was reincarnated in another world as a young son of a minor noble who's, who owns a small domain. Ars, Ars was not particularly strong or intelligent, but he was born with the appraisal skill that uh, that that's able to see others' abilities, statuses, and he uses the skill to find the best hidden talents in the world to make their small, weak domain into the best. An isekai tale of a unification is about to start, featuring the kind-hearted R's and the unique talent that he manages to find. I'm for it. Only because the dude in the back got dreads and he's black. But... <laughs> Whoa, bro. But... It's, it, it seems interesting, right? Like finding these group of people who's are, who are incredibly strong. That seems interesting. And Kai, I, again, with Windbreaker, I do like the premise as well. But 
you know, it could be a nice turn off your brain kind of show that we enjoy and we can not recommend to others. Like a lot of shows are in this particular category. Uh, the banished former hero lives as he pleases. Whoa. Another one I never heard. All right, here we go. Because this, the name seemed like we might like because we do like Banished from Heroes Party. So here we go. I can finally go search for the peaceful life I've been looking for forward to since my past life. Alan, a boy called failure because he was not blessed with a gift from God, is actually a former hero who still has the memories and powers of his past life. Mm. Using his banishment from his family's duchy as an excuse, Alan is about to start a carefree journey to do whatever he wants when he comes across an attempt on, his, on the life of his ex fiance. Come on, bro. Mm. I know, right? <laughs> the former hero wants to live a relaxing life this time around, but the heroic fantasy life he never wanted is about to begin. I don't this know. Might, that sounds might be, this might clean. Be good. This might be good. This seems like, yeah. Whoa. It's like the reverse of Banish from a Hero's Party, but not. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. No, totally. Like they both looking for peace, but this is going this seems like it's gonna be very a little bit more ac- action centric. Wow, okay. Hopefully your story is good. That's all it takes. Let's go to uh Oh, this is easy. I I picked up an easy one. Let's go to Rob J's sleeper, bartender, glass of God. And this is literally the synopsis, so bear with me. The brilliant bartender can uplift any troubled soul with a glass of God. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. That's it. Hold that's on, but a it, good synopsis. It's, it has one called Bartender. It says genius bartender Sasaki Kori Ryu makes the most incredible cocktails anyone has ever tasted seeking his glass of God individuals from all walks of different. So this is a season two alert, alert, alert. Everybody who's, who's picking bartender. This is apparently a season two of an anime that came out in 2006. So you might want to go back. Oh, you, you read it. The adaption is very good. Which, which one is it bartender or the one we were just talking about banished one. Cause I know it's a delay on YouTube. I have not been checking the okay the Twitter Twitter chat's quiet. You think it's a remake? It says parent, so you might be right. You might yeah, be right. It does look like a remake. It might be a remake. Okay, forgive me. I, I was wrong. It's a remake. I was because it's, it's never a synopsis this short, right? Like it's so that's crazy. Analysts always do synopsis proper, so I was a little little confused there. Sheesh. Had to look at the bartender. Might have to go back and catch that old one. I know, right? Kai says, I hope uh, this new entry good. Oh, okay. He was referring to bartender. Copy that. Okay, let's... Here's another one. God damn, it's so many. When you think it's a short season, we thought winter was going to be short. It ended up being the opposite. We ended up watching 30. This one even got stuff... I mean, these are probably drop droppable stuff right like stuff we're gonna watch three episodes like we normally do three episode rule and then drop it but god's games god's games we play i hate the alliteration on that so much but in their overabundance of free time the gods grew bored and decided to create a challenging battles create challenging battles of wit hold on we might be onto something here create (laughs) challenging battles of wits to spice things up their opponent humanity a select few players called Apostles meet the gods on the spiritual realms playing field to beat the deities at their own game. A former god named Leoshia Holy shit. Leoshia has woken after sleeping for thousands of years and her first demand is to meet this heir's very best player. She is introduced to Faye, an acclaimed rookie Apostle. Together, they plan to challenge the gods Win the ultimate prize, but not one in human history has managed to clear the clear the ten games, because the gods can be corporeous, outrageous, and sometimes downright incomprehensible in the face of absurdity. What can the apostles okay. do to enjoy the contest to its fullest? Oh, we playing Yu Gi Oh. Okay. Yeah, it, it also sounds like uh, no game, no life continued Yo. or completed. What's so funny about what Kai just said was that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, this is the fucking 
the plot to Yu-Gi-Oh, but except like in a different form. <laughs> it's a card mm-hmm. game. Oh my god, this might be that battle. What was that card game you had as a sleeper a couple of seasons back, a couple of years back? Uh, Bill Divide. God damn it, Till. It was heat. It was a 10 out of 10 anime. A, the you ain't got a hate, bro. Told. You ain't got a hate, bro. You ain't got a lot of me, Craig. Turn your light off. <laughs> you ain't got a lot of me, Craig. <laughs> Turn your light off. <laughs> we, 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 uh, we logging out. No, I'm just trying to... <laughs> Oh my goodness. No, it was yeah, it was uh No Vanguard, the first season of that anime wasn't bad. It was it, everything. That one that. wasn't bad, yeah, for sure, for sure. That the bad, what was what was it called again? I forgot that fast. All right, Vanguard. I I, I, no, I watched that before this podcast. Oh, Build the Vibe. Build the Vibe was, was awful. It wasn't the worst, but it was it it got worse as it got as it, it went on. No, you know what you're right, because we were we were filling the first four probably. Yeah, that's exactly about like episode five is where it, it yep. turned to dog poop. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, and, and then, then the, the, the sister shit. I hate the sister. Oh love. my god, the sister love is. Just, I, I, I'm all for romance and harems and whatever, but I cannot do sister love. That's just just too yeah, much. Bro. Um, but Mister Mysterious Disappearances. This is uh T Money Fingers. What and what oh, was yeah, it? Yeah. J Coates too, right? I think it was yes. J Coates Sleeper. But uh, let's read this. one. An aspiring novelist teams up with an enigmatic en- 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 colleague to solve supernatural urban mysteries. Uh oh. As I had to say it was a mystery for me and I'm man. <laughs> Agari Sumer- Sumereko is a busty bookstore clerk. Wait. It's a busty bookstore clerk who wants to become a novelist after some writing success in her youth. When strange occurrences start cropping up around the city, she teams up with her flirtatious co-worker, Adashino Rin, to look into them. But Ren is hiding a secret of his own. With their combined skills of occult knowledge, what will they discover as they investigate? It's giving me Inspector vibes. I'm kind of with it. I'm with it for sure. As soon as I saw <laughs> it, I was like, I like that. That's very interesting. It was not I knew expecting it. As soon as I saw it, I like that. That that's, was like right on my radar. That's my first time reading that synopsis too, by the way. And I'm, I'm kind of so. Yeah, I didn't read the synopsis. I just saw the picture and I knew. I was like, yep, that's what I want. Uh, who picked Remaster? Somebody picked Remaster, didn't they? Uh, let me see. I think it was somebody in the Discord. We might have. UETJ. UETJ. That's right. It was on Twitter. Uh, he says after meeting, it says after meeting an untimely death, Tomoe Kui Kanata is reincarnated as a lowly goblin, but he works his way up a monster, a monstrous appetite thanks to his new ability that allows him to grow stronger the more he feeds. It's Feeble status quickly quickly changes and he rises to become the goblin leader with a mix of his past memories, new body, and a strong stomach. He's taking, he's my taking little a, at? hold on, hold on. Well, listen to this bar though. He's taking a bite out of this new fantastical world. <laughs> nah, he's taking y'all a know, bite. Y'all, <laughs> y'all know how y'all hear that little Wayne lighter flick at the beginning of a song? I kind of want that anime. I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it reminds me of Undead Adventure. <laughs> It does kind of remind me of Vendetta Venture. That's very true. I'm, of course, watching The Duke of Death is May Season 3 when that's dubbed and done. Love that show. Of course, of course. I think, right, bro. That's, I think that's it. Now it's time yeah. for us to uh, pick our sleepers. If we missing anything, make sure y'all come comment on the YouTube video or uh, please message us on Twitter. <laughs> he said, I'm going to eat it. I'm with you, Kai. Please message us on Twitter if there's anything you've seen that we did not talk about this episode because we're kind of going really long. Let us know. And we'll... Uh... J. Lee Trey, what's up, brother? Uh, he, he's on Twitter. He just he just mentioned Bartender. But let us know. Um, let us know if we're missing any shows that you think we should watch. But Bartender does look super interesting. I just want to throw it in there. Okay. Now... Tell you said you wanted to pick your sleeper first before we started recording. Yeah, what you, what you picking? I chose bartender. <laughs> I, I, I did literally, really? I, I did, I did, and I didn't think that so many people were going to talk about it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, so. I chose, I chose bartender. I, I looked at the picture, I looked at that 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 title, and I was like, I just imagined this is a week to week. It reminded me of, of Death Parade. That's like, why it, it, to me. It felt like it was going to be this week-to-week story that was going to be intense. And I was like, man, 
I'm choosing bartender. I already know it is. I'm choosing it. If, if anybody, I mean, it's not very hard, but just take a guess at what I'm going to pick. <laughs> oh, man. It's a slice of life. Okay. And hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me see. It was a condition called love. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah. As soon as Crystal pick it, I'm like, I thought I finally pick one that's not the fucking same as Crystal's. I picked this three weeks ago when I cheated and looked at the list. And as soon as I see Crystal's tweet, I'm like, son of a motherfucker. I mean, we just have the same <laughs> taste. We just we just have the same taste. I knew she was I thought she was gonna pick it, but I also thought, and I'm not gonna hold you, I said this to myself while I was sitting at this desk with all these fucking monitors. I thought she was going to pick <laughs> Uh, I thought she was going to pick Windbreaker only because yeah. of the resemblance to K. That's literally what I thought she was going to pick. So I'm like, maybe, just maybe this time, me and Crystal won't have the exact nah, same sleepers. Brother. But here Absolutely we go. Not. Here we go again. A condition called love. It just is. It's, it's a polo ass anime. Yeah. So, as soon as that synopsis is read, I was like, yeah, that's polo sleeper. I, I ain't even. And, I ain't even mix it up. And I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I was contemplating a lot on switching it up because crystal picked it to the one i just read which i believe was let me find it the one where the guy has to climb the tower Mm -hmm. that's the one i was thinking about switching to but that's definitely going to get watched like there's no ifs ands or buts about that but you know how we do we 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 reach the top we we reach the top we reach the end of the list, I, again, I thought, I did not think this list was going to get as big, but let's count them out, all right? And oh, I'm probably oh, and I'm probably missing some, so bear with me. But I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24 shows in this list this season that I'm gonna watch. Uh, I cannot believe this 24. Hold up, shows. give me a second. I'm almost there. And there might even be more than that. I'm about to go through and make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely missed one. 25. Yeah, I think I Remember, set them as watching so they show up in your airing and your anime in progress. And then when they air, they'll pop up to the top so that you know that they that they that they list. You got 18 in yours, Crystal. I got 18. Damn. What did I add? That? Oh, because Duke of Death and is made yeah. in season three. Yeah, unnamed memory was the one I was going to switch to. I thought about switching to. But I, I had to re-click some stuff because I know I clicked I clicked oh. on some things. I have 18 as of right now. Hold on. I'm before, pretty sure I clicked more. Before we go to break, I just found another one. An Arch Demon's Dilemma. Okay. How to Love Your Elf Bride. Zygon, yeah, Zygon might be the most feared evil sorcerer, but when it comes to the social interactions, he's the, he's the most inept. All those days studying the dark arts won't help him when he falls in love at first sight with Nephalia. The beautiful elven slave and spends his entire fortune to purchase her with no clue how to talk to each other the awkward arrangement of a bumbling sorcerer and a timid elf begins that's another polo eyes anime right there i'm at that to make that 26 my favorite number <laughs> i have 20 including a movie in a movie series what Bro, movie? i don't think i had it oh bochi, bochi the rock i think it's tk is bochi the rock isn't it I'm not I, I couldn't I could not get with the first one I, I it wasn't bad but it's just music man the music ones just don't do it for me I don't know what is this vampire dormitory never mind the cross-dressing girl do- and a doting vampire dangerous co- cohabitation is about to begin that's enough for me to say nope yeah, uh, and it does look like some of my stuff didn't when I hit save for watching it didn't go through. So yeah, I'm actually at 22. So 22, 22 for me. We'll know by midterms on what we dropping and what we or three 
four weeks from now? A no. Quarter, uh, yeah, yeah, about, about a month from now. Ago. Yeah, we'll know. Yeah, Bochi Rock got a movie. It's right here. Bochi. Oh, never mind. It's not a real movie. A compilation film of Bochi the Rock. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry to get your hope up, Kai. My bad. <laughs> My fault. My fault. It's a compilation movie. So it's probably just a recap of the first season. I, I feel terrible. Forgive me. You should. I definitely should. God's uh God's games we play seems interesting, but because it's a card game, I'm kinda kinda worried because those are really hard to get right. That's true. No one gets them right. But I the the thing is with these card games, I actually think some of them are better when they don't try and make a real game. I agree. You know what I mean? Like what made Yu-Gi-Oh amazing was that they did not play by the rules for real. <laughs> it's, so it's like if you play by the rules of the game you make just because it's got to be fair it does get boring man i need an op if i'm watching this card game i need it to actually feel like op like i need you to run that all them hands and spades if you made a spades anime you know what i mean yeah. like you can't make a boring card game and just expect us to play by the rules all the time or else like you said it's gonna be boring it's hard to get right yeah no i agree that's interesting why does it? Never mind. I'm not even gonna ask that question because I already know something up with Twitter. But uh, all right, let's take this quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk questions. Any questions y'all have in the chat, queue them up for us while the song plays. The song is only two minutes, so we're gonna take a quick two minute break, use the bathroom, stand up, stretch, stretch our wings. But we can talk about whatever y'all want in this next um, in this next section. But we're gonna take this quick break, and we'll be right back after these. That was fast. Welcome back to episode 246 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Oh, any questions for us before we uh before we end tonight? What a what a great fucking spring, bro. I and yeah. honestly, I was not expecting it to be to be like this. If it's, I'm keeping it real, it's rather thick. Yeah, these seasons, man. Uh, I don't know what's going on in the anime world outside of what I actually watch, but <laughs> true, they are producing some some some. You know, we don't use mid often, but some quality mid in the words of Big O. And uh, I hate that word. I would say everything in me. 
mad decent um some mad decent That's stuff coming out relatively frequently so having 20 plus anime to watch every season is is getting us to a crazy point we literally watching 100 anime a year yeah but however it sucks for us that want to go back and watch old stuff because like my anime in progress list as uh, crystal astutely put <laughs> it's a lot of shit <laughs> you know like i yeah. got I started watching uh, Holic. For those of you who don't know, I was recommended this by The Wonder of Anime after I featured on her podcast recently. So I featured on The Wonder of Anime, and she mentioned that because I talked about Clanat as my uh, basically as my TED talk for her for her episode. She said I she think I would like Holic. I watched twelve episodes of it. It's it's so good. It's so good. But I'm gonna save that for when I get done with it. It's twenty four um, episodes. So I'm gonna save that for when I get done. I fucking love. Um, what's her name? Y- Yuko in in Holic, because she's like one of the freshest anime characters of all times. The thing about Holic though is that, and somebody said it in the comments of the Crunchyroll video, and I just I know, so I'm taking it from from there. But they look like Slenderman people. They look the limbs are long, the fingers are long. It's kind of it's almost One Piece esque, but even more over exaggerated with the long limbs and shit. But the concept is interesting. So, so you think about if you've never seen Holic, which I'm, it's an old show, came out in 2006. But it's about think about it like this: um, What happens when you lie a lot? What if your hand start, stops to work? Right? What happens if, like, when you, because you lie so much, because you lie so much, there's this black cloud that builds up above you, supernaturally like black cloud that makes your body stop working because it's you're so heavy full of lies it takes the concept of different stuff like like that like um like okay you lie a lot or you you cheat on a bunch of different people when you get caught up what happens but in the supernatural element of it it talks about uh karma not being real but fate is you know um how how, how like it's it's so it's so mysterious and mystical that I'm I'm invested. Holic? Holic. Yep. It's 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 titled XXX Holic, but it's just Holic. It's so good and funny. <laughs> but I really do like the concept of of where it goes as far as like, you know, the supernatural aspects of the most common shit. Like this girl, like it's 2006, so this girl gets addicted to the computer. And like what are the supernatural ramifications of getting addicted to the com- computer? She wants to stop, but she just can't stop. Every time she gets an email, she gets excited. She joins these chat rooms and she's just so a part of it, so deep in it that she's ignoring her son, that she's ignoring her husband, but she wants so much to be a part of their lives, but she's invested in the internet. It's so fucking good. It's, it's so it's so intriguing. And like, and it talks, it, it and the reason why probably the Wonder of Anime recommended it is because it deals with basically the equivalent exchange concept too. Like, what would you pay for your wish to be granted? What's your wish? What do you pay for to getting that granted? You know what I'm saying? It's very, very interesting. It's so good. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm loving it. Yeah, that that is immediately added to the list. As soon as you start really uh I guess talking about yeah, man. <laughs> the philosophical that, that, piece that's of it. All, yeah, that's all me. That's all me. Yeah. That's my vibe right there. A very death parade like too. It's it's interesting. And like and like I said, the funniness of it, and like once you get past the Slenderman body art style, it's it's effortless. It's good. Yeah, it's just stylized, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. heavy uh early manga. Yes. You know. So Indeed. That it and I was, <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. Actually, that, that brings me to uh a little bit about Apothecary Diaries. I, I was thinking about Mao Mao and her name is Xiao Mao and I was thinking is that old Japanese because you know they have different uh, what is it I know they have different writings for old and then new Japanese it's Chinese is that so it is Xiao, it is Chinese then okay I was that's what I was thinking too because Xiao Mao sound like a Chinese name so I was thinking is it a old Japanese name okay my Thank girlfriend you. my girlfriend told me when she told me this it made me love the show even more because of the shit they do but it means cat like mao 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 means cat mm. and it and it makes me love the show even more because of the little cat things they be doing with her and how she is she's curious like a cat so yeah. it's 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 it so dope her, everything everything it just fits so well 
It's been so Let's long. go. Look at that. Getting lower at home. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend is Taiwanese, by the way, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> uh, any Anything else you got? Uh, I... Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm really just ready for this for this review. I've been analyzing and double analyzing this show. Okay, okay. So you caught up on Tomaza uh Love Don't Cost a Thing season two or Tomazaki mm -hmm. about your character Tomazaki. Mm hmm I love that. Do you wanna save it for the review? I, I I'll say this, um, without spoiling anything. Base level, my opinion of it is that it's really good. I think it's really good. Mm. Um I'm going to be fair in the review, but it's a really good show. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 our reviews are are some of our staples here at Mike Check White Fool White Fool, and I'm glad we determined we decided to do a mid a midterm review and a end of the season review of of just random shows or whatever we yeah. want to review. But we're gonna try to do two reviews every single season, so um, be ready for that. And this one to, next week. Sorry, I hope I say tomorrow. What the fuck? Next week, yeah. two forty-seven. We're gonna review yeah. bottom tail characters uh, season two. Obviously, it, we're gonna try to do it, uh, the least amount of spoilers as possible. But what's up? I was gonna say, and it does make it really cool because now I'm looking at this this like spring list, and it's like, what is gonna be end up being good enough to even make us think about reviewing this or something mm. else at the end of the season? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what if there's something that's just so good it makes you want to review at the end of the season? I'm hoping that that kind of gets to that point where we we get one of these shows that we wasn't expecting to be that good you know what you just like I, I always think about love flops bro because I, I i don't think love flops is good but i always think that transition episode that was crazy the turning point as we always yeah, talk but, about but go ahead what, did you, what, did you, what were you about to say maybe we do this let's pick one of these shows that we review now because what happened okay this is this is the thing i want to avoid i want to avoid finding like going through these shows right being biased yes you're watching it you're loving it let's review that and you're only reviewing the stuff you love so i think pre-picking a show and then and we got to review that yes and we got to review obviously let's not let it be one of our sleepers yeah you know, separate from our sleepers separate from our sleepers it's a show we have to watch that i do feel like we should just review some something unique too maybe Hey, is that our guy, Jay Lee? Jay Lee have twenty seven anime in his list. He says, "Damn, it makes sense." It makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. He says, "Uh, but I already know it's going to go down to fifteen. Yo, Jay Lee, that's, <laughs> that's the crazy part because I expected that same thing last season or this winter season, and I find myself only cutting hard. like two or three. Yeah, I'm like, I don't think there's any way I can cut anything. I, what did I cut? Did I cut anything? Oh, uh, Metallic Rouge. Yeah, I think that was the only thing I cut. Everything else, I pretty much watched it all. <laughs> I would. Okay, I'm thinking this is. Hear me out. Something that's unique to like that has us in the middle, like in the middle spectrum for both of us. All right. I'm thinking Windbreaker. Windbreaker. That's fair. That's it's, fair. Uh, we don't know how many episodes yet, but it's released April 5th. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Tell's birthday coming up soon, by the way, y'all. But like, Don't you worry about all that. <laughs> <laughs> J, J. Lee Trey says, uh, last season I had 17 and it went down to 14. you right. <laughs> exactly. Right, man. Oh, which in the Beast also got cut too, Crystal. Yep, you're right. I definitely got cut, so I cut a couple. And then, and then we get halfway through the season, we start adding stuff to the list. So what's the right. point? <laughs> right. What's the point? <laughs> Shout out to Crystal for that because I added. Uh, <laughs> I added. What I add? I um, mean, we both ended up adding a sign of affection. Sign of affection. Um, um. Seven time loop. Doctor Elise. Doctor Elise being added literally this week was fucking wild for me. Man. So I went right back up to where I was, like thirty. Yeah, you like Witching then, the Beast, Jay Lee? I wonder if it got better. I always do the three episode cut uh, in the mid season cut so I don't get overwhelmed. TK does nothing or is spitting. I try I, to, but it's hard. So I do plan to have Witching the Beast done um, for next week just to 
keep up the consistency. And then we'll have like Metallic Rouge done. Uh, and like I said, I love the world, but man, I wish those characters would just do something other than be in this show. Uh, but it's such a good world. But yeah, I'll have Metallic Rouge done. And I'm I'm going to try and get a couple of things I don't think. I, I got to finish the Fireman one. The Fireman, I think, has I have one episode left of. The so homie, I can finally talk about that one. The homie J. Lee Trey says it was a solid 6.5 for The Witch and the Beast. <clears throat> Better than I thought. Better okay. than I thought, actually, because I did not expect it to be. It, the first episode, I just didn't like the, the teleporting that it was going on. And it was like, what the fuck? It was so no, much. Uh, so the transitionary stuff, yeah. Yeah, transitionary stuff was bad. But Tyler Roos is a seven from, from Jay Lee. It just didn't draw me in immediately, but I think it, I think it had a. I mean, the characters weren't drawing me in, I guess is really what it was. Which the world was just yeah. like, felt, felt very. I mean, I ain't gonna say it, bad. it was bad. It just felt okay. So I, yeah. I just was like, okay, cool. I can watch this later. But yeah, Metallic Rouge, like I said, and, and if you agree with me, uh, Jay Lee Trey, uh, that world to me, I love how they built the world, how they talk about the world, everything, all the little details they drip drop everywhere it around sounds, and yeah. talking about that. I love it. It's just the characters, and I only mean those main two protagonists, they are not interesting to me whatsoever and then one gets slightly more interesting towards the end and it's like cool but the show still ain't good yet <laughs> it's what's funny is that you're not the only person to say that because i know our podcast taste is very unique to like us but like the fact that you're not the only person to say that mcs and metallic rouge is garbage is is baffling to me like how do you hit on the world? Because when you tell me about the world, I'm like, this shit seems so fucking cool, man. It's, it's so cool, bro. It's I swear. So cool. And I, I wish I could just show you the anime and just take everything about the characters out and just give you the world. Because <laughs> it's literally just like that. That's the part that's cool. Even the characters they just meet in the world, like the the other um, neen, neens or and everything like that. They're all cool except for the main characters. It's so it's kind of crazy. What a drop! What a drop back. J. Lee Trey says that was right. Yeah, the, the world is crazy though. It's it. It seems like it could be a video game, like it, like a Mass Effect kind of style video game with the racism. It, it almost, the, if anything, it'd be more like near. Mm. It would be more like near, bro. But like with cosmic interference, I guess in a sense. But now it, that it's, I understand. <laughs> it's it's so close to that. Just with wow. trash characters. <laughs> that's what it is, Damn, bro. that's crazy. Because if see, those... look, look, the MCs are not good at all. It's weird, but the world and everything that holds it. It's crazy because it now that you mention it, like Nier's characters and all is, is phenomenal. But interesting, man. Interesting stuff, man. Near Near is one of my favorite games of all times, by the way. Near Automata. Yeah. I played all, I think I got 25 out of the 26 endings, but I fucking love that game so much. So it, it and the world of Nier is way more, it's so deep that that's, Metallic Rouge do seem deep in the world aspect of it. Then you got somebody who can't like push the story along and he kind of feels left for dead. <laughs> left for dead. That's, um, oh, man. so, I digress. Windbreaker, we're reviewing. So it's yes. one that we have to watch. No matter how good or bad. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so this is what we have to do. We have to avoid talking about it for the midterms. Okay. I mean, maybe it's super good, though. Who knows? Yeah, that, that would give too much of our insight at that point. Exactly, exactly. But we got to find something we got we to review during the midterms, too. <clears throat> that, that could be something from, you know, this previous season. Or, I mean, just something that we bring we up from the up. past. Because what we just, we, yeah, we just blasted through something before. Yeah, I'm trying to look through my anime list to see what I got here that we could. I'm re I resent the notes. <laughs> oh, in, in, the, in the Discord? Yeah. Sweet. Um... Let's find I something think. that we haven't watched yet that's already completed that we can review for the mid season two. Mm. You want you want to pull something from the previous season? No. Mm. I, 
because the reason for my thought process behind that is because something that is fresh to both of us that we don't know each other's thoughts on, you know what I mean? As far as like mm-hmm. a mid a mid season review, a show that we've never watched. If anybody got any suggestions out there, just throw out oh, some shows that you like. Um that you think we could review. And this we're just kind of getting it ready for the mid season. We got a long way to go before we get to it, but something we could take our time on. Reverin is the number one anime on Annie list right now, and that makes me so fucking happy. It deserves it. Jesus Christ, that makes me so happy. Cheese and crackers. Wow, the no, season man. the season of uh the Madagatari series that I need to watch it has eighty nine percent. I need to let me go ahead and pick that up. We right. both need to watch. Yeah. I can't let you pass me up on the Monogatari series, bro. That's that would be insane. Wait, you haven't watched the Omori Monogatari? The one the latest season? No. That's not, I don't think that's the latest season. This is this came out in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, I watched that. I'm talking about didn't didn't something new just come from them? I don't think I don't you know I don't know. Mm. I thought something new came from them. Yeah, I finished uh, a Suki Monogatari already. I mean, maybe down the line, once you finish the latest one, we can do a review. Oh, uh, uh, Jay Lee Trey says Soul Eater. So we already did a long form rewatch of Soul Eater. Uh, what was it? A couple of years ago? A few years ago? It, it was probably just about a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, that one was interesting. Yeah, I I've always I've been, I've been a long time fan of Soul Eater. Um, I know Polo did not like it half as much as I did. No, it, it, yeah, um, it just wasn't for me. It could have been my nostalgia glasses, but I really enjoy Soul Eater. Yeah, I do like um, what's the Fire face? Force? No, of course oh, I love Black Star. Love Fire Force, but I do like Black Star a lot. Black Star yeah. was my favorite. Black Star is indeed that dude. <laughs> Black Star was fire. Yeah, Black Star had Black Forces and Black. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I liked him. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a do rag on. I ain't gonna lie yeah, to you. That's exactly why I liked him. Black Star was <laughs> the shit. But that was one where the main character for me wasn't wasn't it, and that's why it wasn't really messing with me. So Eater pisses yeah. me off. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? Because of the the manga deviations. The manga or deviations. Deviation. Black Star is gas. Black Star is gas. J. Lee Trey says he is though. Um, I'm trying to think of something we could do mid season. I mean, we might have to let that one marinate for a minute. It will um, marinate. That's it. We could do that. I was trying to see. Um, I just went back a couple of years to see what, what we may have just skipped skipped over. Let me let me just say that this fucking show, Doctor Elise, is worth a watch. This yeah, is not as I, I added to my list, bro. I wish more people would watch. It's so good. It's it was very shockingly very good. If it's bad, I'm gonna let you know, but. Yeah, I know you I'm gonna will. Take your word for it. I'm gonna take your word for it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh yeah, I gotta add the Konosubas to my to my watch list too. Oh, I thought I was gonna have enough time to catch up to all this shit, but again, another season where it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to. I didn't complete this. Why am I capping? Or did I? Maybe I did and don't remember. Maybe I did complete season one. I'm gonna set it as rewatching just in case. Detective Conan coming out with his 300th movie. <laughs> <laughs> they got a movie every every month, bro. They put out more movies than anybody. I don't know why Rent a Girlfriend is still on my manga list, and I'm still I'm still reading it. I don't know why I'm doing. Are it. you still reading it? I don't know why. Man, you like torture. That's what That's it is. Tor- it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad, but I can't stop. I'm here. Yes, it was, what was it? It was that one last scene. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm done. I can't even hold you. I'm excited for your sleeper bartender, man. It's it's looking like it's gonna be fire. I hope I hope it's like what I'm saying, like that Death Parade-esque. Yes, I love Death Parade. Feeling. 
it's just that if and it's, it has to be done right, you know what I mean? Because it all leads to a, a end game. So I'm hoping that there is an end game because they're saying he's looking for his final drink is what you read in that, that other synopsis. I didn't even look at that. But if he's looking for his God drink, his, his you know, his uh, magnum opus of a, of a beverage, I feel like all of this is going to lead to that final story. And I'm like, bro, this might actually be fire. Like, this is already, when you read that synopsis, I was like, this is already better than I thought. It's already better. Uh, Crystal and Jay Lee Trey spitting. Crystal says, uh, you might be uh, depending on the show on the show's fall. I binged on shows with low. Wait, what? I binge on days with low to no shows. So See, basically, I, yeah. I'm a doofus. I I read it all wrong. It's mostly because this ring light is right where my chat is, so it's fucking glaring off. But I digress. Anyway, that yeah. uh, that grandma and grandpa joint is definitely gonna be. Yeah, Jay Lee Trey says I can't wait for grandma and grandpa to turn young again for this spring. For some reason, I think it might surprise us. I think you're right, cause and I'm gonna be honest with you. This is this is me keeping it real. At first, I had conditional love three weeks ago when I first looked at the spring list. I'm like, uh, what, what was it called again? No condition of love, whatever it's fucking called. A I had that one. Of love. A condition of love. I had that one as my sleeper. Then I saw the grandpa turn the the, the one that turned young again. Then I was about to switch it to that. But then I'm like, nah, because I started seeing people pick it as they sleep in our Discord, Jay Lee Trey. And I'm like, I can't, I can't, I don't want to go with what everybody else goes with as much as possible. So I went back to my original and then end up picking the same thing as Crystal anyway, because that's always happen when we do these. But I think you're right. I think that one's about to be a smash hit. We hopefully between Shogo Ha and Mike Check Waifu Waifu, we can get people to, to tone in on that. So help me out, Jay Lee, and it'd be fire. Hopefully it's fire. We could be wrong. We never know. Yeah. But that's what I, makes this I shit so fun. I think it's going to be fire, bro. I, I do think too. it's going to be. Like, like I feel a like chill just one, how right? it described. Yeah, bro. Like, it's, it's going to be, that's it. But that's how it, that's how it should be. Yes. Sometimes that chill stuff is, is fire. Just like, like I said, the Saints Magic Powers Omnipotent. That was fire, bro. Oh my but God, it was I love so that show. chill. So. I'm hoping, I think it's going to be fire. And I think, I mean, it might even have a little bit of something else, but. Yeah. I, the ones that I like the most are the ones like that, where you could just sit back and relax. I think. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? I don't know if y'all heard that, but somebody was screaming outside. Uh, the ones I like the most is the ones where you could sit back and relax and enjoy. Like Duke of Death and his mate, while it has an intense story, like imagine not being able to touch anybody because if you touch them, they fucking die. That concept alone, but the show is so relaxing and cool and chill and smooth and fucking phenomenal. And then the art style being CGI in a way that's beautiful. Ugh, oh, it's, oh, it's amazing. You know what it is? It's the delivery, right? Because the way you just explained that is that literally it's this super chill show, but it's that 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 kind of like dark scariness that's in the background that anything could happen so right. that's probably what it is just knowing that this is what it is essentially and that's probably why saint's magic power is omnipotent is so good because she is technically a hero yeah she's supposed to be doing something you know what i mean so it's like there's always that overarching theme of like the darkness and scariness in the background even though you're chilling you good 100 percent. 100 percent. shit might get scary at any moment Daily Trey says we spoke on it on our uh, spring preview Friday. It's going to be a sneaky one. I agree with that. He says the Shogo High slash, uh, uh, cross mic check waifu uh, agenda will push. No worries. That's, and that's all we want to do, man. We want to push these ones that's like deep in there. And we yeah. just want to bring out to the light. You know what I'm saying? That's the goals. That's, uh, you know what? And I said this. I think I said this a few episodes ago. I'm so tired of those TikTok podcasts. And... Uh, <laughs> Sorry to throw it. Foul, foul, foul. Sorry for the shots, but I got to shoot them. I, it's, I keep seeing it, and this goes for me scrolling on what, what, what Rob J call it, Tic Tac. It goes for me scrolling on Tic Tac and being in that anime bracket because I like a lot of anime shit. And just hearing these conversations, man, it's so frustrating. We talked, I talked about it on what the, uh, the Wonder of Anime too. It's like, we, we got to do more. We got to watch more. And it may be because me and Tell started before the pandemic. So it's like, We've been doing this shit for so long, even before the podcast boom started. Like, I'm fucking so, so sick of the, the fucking, the Tic Tac podcast clip, the clip shows that be just dropping these clips of fucking anime of shit that everybody already watched, that already have these opinionated opinions on. 
It's the same one. It's the fucking same ones, Jay Lee. I mean, the thing is, is though, and but it gets out. the clicks. I, it, it does, and that's exactly what I was about to say. It's gonna get recycled, bro. And yeah. it, and the, the reason it gets recycled and people like it so much is because we like to recycle stuff, man. We we go through we go through seasons. So next year around this time, we're gonna be talking about Kira Toriyama because we we know why. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about Dragon Ball. Yep. And we're gonna be talking about memorable moments in Dragon Ball because we're gonna recycle it, and that's just I mean, how it's we gonna be. Not. <laughs> I, I, yeah, specifically us. But in a month, who you know, Inuyasha might come up. And in a month after that, it's gonna yeah. be Full Metal Alchemist. And in a month after that, it's gonna be I don't know the Cell games again. You know, we are gonna go through that because that's just how the season's gonna work. But you gotta, I mean, it, it keeps the it keeps the community moving. We just gotta keep you know throwing in our little mix every once in a while to make sure that. Uh, there's more to talk about. And and that's why, and you know what, that's why I tweeted what I tweeted earlier today. <clears throat> because so many people, and, and I saw, and it's because I saw a TikTok of an anime creator getting so upset where he was mentally losing his fucking mind, bro. He was losing his fuck. I'm like, bro, you can't let this shit break you, bro. You cannot let this shit break you because for one, it don't matter. It don't matter whatsoever. So mm-hmm. just don't let it take you to a point where you're ready to fucking lose it because of some anime take. But I think it was fucking something simple too, bro. Like fairy tale or some bullshit that I don't care about. But it was something that was so simple that I'm like, yo, we we gotta we gotta stop that. Plus, uh, and I'm gonna get a shout out because I'm I'm going antagonist for some reason right now. Shout out to the girl who who quote tweeted my tweet. And say I'm gonna tweet what I want, and you doing this for engagement yourself. I'm like, no, sorry, sweetheart, you took it personal. You didn't read it all. I don't know what the fuck was your issue, but you took it wrong because what I stated was that the people who are mentally broken by it should not let it do that. Not you who just tweet a lot. I'm, you could tweet all you want. I'm, I'm, that's you. you. Tweet all you want as long as it's not mentally breaking you down to the point to, of no return. <laughs> then it's okay. it's okay. I promise you, it's it's okay. But if it is breaking you down, then get off of it. That's all I was saying. I would. It's a fact. I wasn't stating that for some lady to be. I don't know. To tell her to stop. I'm not what I was doing, but whatever. <laughs> we, can't, we can't. We can't control that, bro. We just don't, you know, if people want to be their own demise and lose their sanity yeah. or whatever, we gotta oh. let it go. I don't um, want to see anybody lose their sanity, though. You know. It, it's- it's like trying to figure out who's stronger, uh, original Broly or this Broly. We know who's stronger. I hate here. Right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jaylee Trey says, says it's the real Broly ones that dive Broly. deeper, <laughs> and he says we know who they are. We'll continue to shine a light on, on real projects, no matter. What. I feel that man. TK does nothing. Saying bro needs to go outside. Yo, straight up, <laughs> bro, he was so upset. I swear, I think it was a fairy tale tic tac or something. But he was losing it to the point where he was like almost in tears and i'm like man we and i don't i don't i don't normally i say i don't care about what anybody do or say i always say that i don't give a fuck about what anybody else do it doesn't as long as it ain't got nothing to do with tell and anybody here and anybody else that i actually care about like you know anybody else i don't really care but seeing that it made me it hurt my heart because he was truly losing his fucking mind bro and i'm like yo i cannot I'm, I feel bad. Like I feel you can't let it do that. We can't let it do that. Put the fucking phone down. <laughs> get off of Tic Tac. Get off of Instagram. Get off of Twitter for five seconds. Just one day. If you got it, if, if Fairy Tale got you like that, I don't again, I don't know if it was Fairy Tale. I don't remember if it was Fairy Tale. It probably was Black Clover. Something a show that I fucking hate. One of the two. But he was losing his shit. I'm like, yo, yo that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy, man. I I, I love anime. Like nobody's business. I could I can talk it. I can give you explain. I can give you great explanations why I don't like something. I can give you why I love something. I can give you why why it was uh, as Tell would say, uh, uh, mad decent. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna fucking let anything make me cry over it. You know, unless it's Clint. But I don't know if you tell me my favorite mad decent anime ain't mad decent. I might have a problem with it. Well, it's more than mad decent, right? It's you might cry. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's funny mad decent is a way better word than mid by the way i just want to get that out there and shout out to tell for for coining that about 10 years ago 
<laughs> I don't know where it came from. I, I don't know. Mad he, is a thing. He, you know that's mad decent. I, I, I was still yeah, I was still in Ohio. I was mm-hmm. in Akron. I think the first time I ever said it. I swear it was so it would be more than ten years ago if that was the case. Yeah. Sheesh. Like a solid twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And it's interesting, man. It's interesting. I'm old y'all. We are very old. Question. No, nah, I'm old. Question, <laughs> Jay Lee Trey, I, already, I saw the quote and I started laughing, but question, and this may be a head ass, <laughs> but what are y'all thoughts on, yo, you know what, the Baki versus Kerrigan Ashara joint. That, I just saw that. I'm going to watch it. Me too. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't like neither one of those shows, but that is fucking fire. I like Baki yeah. a little bit more, but. The crossover joints, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's where. I'm really drawn in and I've always been I mean I have watched a little bit of Baki and um I've watched more of a what is it called King and Ashra lately because it was more more like recent but yeah bro I'm I'm watching that yeah I I I never been a fan of neither one of them I didn't think they were bad like they're not bad at all but it's just again it's not my shit but that that shit <laughs> That shit seems interesting as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm a I I I'll be real. When it comes down to things that resemble like real martial arts or anything like that, yeah. I know it's not gonna be like definitely not boxing going but. on, right? It's not like yeah, it's not gonna be like <laughs> that series where oh, this is exactly why they're fighting. But I'm I'm into the the breaking down of musculature and and why people are flexible enough to do this kind of stuff because I'm a personal trainer <laughs> and that's what I do. Yeah, I'm interested. I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, TK says the long form thing. He's a little longer form thing. He said, but TK says I ain't seen neither, but I still want to watch that. <laughs> right? Like I seen them both. I I, I seen more of of Baki though. I didn't yeah. like didn't like Baki. Uh, Ashura was was more my speed, but I couldn't get into it because I, and I think it's Tell's fault because of Epo. Um, Epo <laughs> made it hard for me to watch. Epo made it hard for me to watch any other shit. That's like over over exacerbated type shit like that like it's just i'll be like come on man it's too much and dude they go overboard and it's the same thing i felt about uh what's that the hooping one y- y'all like so much uh crystal got uh, her top 10 kirk on no basket kirk on no basket it's super over, over the top like that shit is just too much but i um it's like you ain't never watched kobe play before that's all it is come on man stop <laughs> and kobe's on the court let me go back to what TK said. That's a waste of time or intrigue for fighting anime fans. Uh, I think it's more intrigue. I think it makes it more intriguing to be answered. Yeah, because <laughs> it's something that people are going to ask for. It's like for me, the Ashura versus Akuma battle in, in the video mm. game. I was like, they they fought till they turned to stone at a standstill. That to me, crazy. that's fire. So I'm just like, yes, I want to see this because I want to see what they're going to do. Yeah, actually, no, you spitting. DK does nothing, says in his long, longer form statement, he says, just ask yourself one question. Why does it matter? If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. If it does, go to therapy. My guy, DK. That's, that's, I live on that. That's basically what I live on because it's so, and again, I talk about this with Tell all the time and we talk about this on After Story. So for those of you who are familiar with the After Story episodes, we talk about how that shit None of it matters. Like it never matters. And tell tells a little bit more. Um, I I, I don't want to use the word invested, but it's a it's the only term I can think of. Uh, he 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 would speak on something that is kind of like crazy more so than me. And I'm just like I don't give a fuck. Like, does it have something to do with tell and my nephews and nieces and and his wife? No. Or my brothers, my mothers, and my sister. No, I don't really give a fuck about it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's just I don't give a fuck about it. like the biggest I don't give a fuck about it. And it's so easy for me to do that. Like I don't know when that happened, but it was so easy for me not to care about anything else that ain't got nothing to do with my family. That yeah. I just even stuff that happens in the world. Like I don't give a fuck what's going on anywhere else. Like this would be t- technically more of an after story topic. For oh, me. Sean Butter. But yeah, like, you're right. It's like I'm the same, but. uh it's so hard for me to be quiet because I was raised in a household where uh, I was allowed to talk when I had mm-hmm. a discrepancy or something. That's and true. the internet, I'd be like, yo, you don't have to be stupid for free. You can yeah, go get paid to be stupid. Um, this is definitely an after story conversation. 
So sometimes I just I, I feel like why are you doing this publicly? So yeah, yeah I'm, I should be quiet more, but every once in a while I gotta say something. Yeah. No, nah, you just been back to the Yo, we've been anime. here for what? Three hours, bro? Oh shit, it has been two and a half. Fuck man. See, I shouldn't have been drinking this soju. Anyway. No, nah, we chilling. Hey, we love y'all. I, I love seriously, I love every single one of y'all. All the Patreon producers that produced this, everybody that came through the chats on both Twitter and um, YouTube. I haven't, I wasn't on Twitter as much. I need to set the timer for Twitter longer because once it hit 12, it just shut off. So it, sorry about especially that. Especially y'all who got to work in the morning. Especially y'all that got to work in the morning, Crystal and everybody else. But we love y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Teliano on all social media. You can follow our social media is at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu, Waifu on Instagram. <laughs> about to edit, edit. <laughs> That's your name. We, we keeping it all in, Jay Lee Trey. <laughs> I love that dude. Uh, uh, what was that? I'm, I'm at Polo Profile on social media. He's at King Teliano on social media. You can follow our social media at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu, Waifu on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. And follow me on Blue Sky at Polo. And as always, Mike, 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 Mike. Mike. <laughs>